launching a plan to go and attack the creature in the statue or whatever is out there like in this main hallway to attack you and a part of the process of trying to do this you guys tried to stealth across um, or toggle tried to stealth across to get to the other side of the stairs kind of just marking mm -hmm. it out here and he was really trying to get to the other total side of the temple and the cre he rolled a pretty low stealth roll the stealth roll did not beat the creature's passive perception um so i we basically how it's going to just simp right now how it technically would work is only toggle and i see each other but you guys are aware of this and know that stuff is going on in the main chamber that the creature that you guys are prepared for is reacting you guys hear magic being incanted out now, depending on what you guys do, it might change the creature's spell. Even though this creature is starting to cast magic, it could change it depending on what's going to happen. I've rolled for initiative, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll for some initiative. Can I cast aid? I think someone did last time on some people, but does some people not have that? Um, if anybody upstairs doesn't have it, that would be uh, Lysandrus. Um... Warma and Irina. So, Irina, you're the only one up there that's actually here right now. <laughs> okay. Now, aid, from what I understand, gives temp HP. And temp HP, yeah. by the way, does not stack. Now, Beridian cast aid below and gave aid to everyone else. And you guys just have to keep track of that in your own character sheets. Yep. So, Shaq, you should have um, some more temp HP, I think. Do you understand, Shaq? I rolled in that 20 for initiative. A bit of luck. Nice. Yep. Okay, so I, I cast aid on everybody basically I'll upstairs. <laughs> Do we want to have anybody else cast any other spells? Like Shaq has already shape shifted and some just creatures. Is anybody had, else? Um, some people had uh, Beridian's blessing or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone that was around me, so Shaq, myself, and Marcus. I get a plus four to attack rolls and saving pros, didn't I? Um, I did the temp HP. Uh, ah, okay. Then, so yeah. A doesn't require concentration, correct? No. No. Is anybody else going to cast any spells before we begin? No. I think we done what we done before we went. Everybody's just good to go. I'm assuming if you got so Britain has blessed down. Irina, do you have any spells casted down? Marcus is coming in. Do I get temp HP? Yes, you do get temp right. HP. Nice. I'll cast blade word just in case. There's Marcus joining us via <laughs> airplane. Not willing to miss a D&D play game. Hold on, uh, Irina. Turn back your torch on, too, so I can just see where the character's at. You don't need to move your character. You're, like, basically looking through the eye of that little arrow slit up here, which is represented okay. by this. Um, why don't you roll for Marcus as well? Marcus is just going to be in Zoom. He's not going to, like, rolling. be in the DB character sheet. Okay, let me go to the Body account. Road is in that shave. Okay, let's start off with Marcus. What did Marcus get? 17. Okay. Shaq, what'd you get? All right. Ten. Dwarma? He got 18. You got a 20 tog? 23. 23? Nice. Viridian? Uh, 22. Irina? I got a 9. <laughs> uh, Lysandrus is not here, so I'm just going to put her down for a 0. So Lysandrus will be out of the fight. It's just too much to ask other players to do it. I rolled really low. Toggle, you're up. Okay, hearing that, I hear chanting and shit like that. And yeah, it's like you're just it. like you get to react, you know, to it. I am going to sprint straight across into this other doorway, so I'm out of line of sight. Then. I'll move your character. I'm just Can't double checking. I've got range. Yeah, you can sprint over there. 35. So, yeah, just. You want me to move? Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, 
you are basically in another hallway now. I can't see anything. It's just pitch black, but I'm assuming. it's You have dark vision, so like you're seeing down the hallway here. Like you see a hallway, kind of like what you're planning to do. The, and then you see like the, there's like an opening in the floor over here. You see that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, um, and it looks like there's something over to the right, but you don't know yet what's over there. I'm going to uh, end my turn there and just listen out. Now, as a you're being a scout, I think you get extra movement on your first turn, correct? No, only if I get attacked. Okay. Let's go down the line. Bridian's up. All right. So, what I'm not going to do is peek around the corner. So, you're blind right now. Basically, you'd have the status effect of blindness. You hear magic being encanted out in the main hall. And you assume that a tog has been caught, right? You've been right behind Shaq. Shaq is wild shaped into a giant snake, and he has a couple other big snake allies just ready to go around the corner and go into the fight. What are you doing, Viridian? Okay. Um, so, although blind, would I have the magical fortitude to think I'm casting something 20 feet ahead of me? Yeah, I mean, we'll just try to make a roll or, or something. Are you trying to do something? Yeah, so from where I'm at, uh, yeah, it's 20 feet. So I'll be casting Daylight right there at that point. Yeah, you just want to try to cast it in front of Shaq? Yeah. Or, um, actually, that just sounds stupid. Because um, does, does the Daylight penetrate through, like, walls and stuff because it's a whole entire zone from the point you choose bright shed to dim light um well i guess it's just a point in which it would shed some dim light okay it only at a 60 yeah. foot radius sphere sphere from the point you right. suggest right here so i mean really it won't even go out into the main chamber well and then it's dim light from another 60 feet after that yeah it won't penetrate the magic darkness Okay. Um, well, since I'm completely blind... Um, you could always light a torch. Yeah. Um, as an action, or cast like a light cantrip or something. Do you want me to come back to you and while you're thinking about it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's go down the line to Dwarma. All right. Um, so Dwarma's see? upstairs, like, next to Irina. Dwar Dwarma's... You guys are like sneaking, so you guys haven't gone up to the window yet for the creature to try to look at you. But you know magic is being cast, so if this is your chance, Storm, if you want to do something. Uh, well, technically, see, he's, he's waiting for the daylight signal. Okay, so. he's just waiting by then. Marcus is up. He's got Blade Song up, and then I think he has another spell or something up, he has too. A mirror image up, or whatever it's called. Yeah, so I'm assuming all this starts off on round one. Marcus is up. Marcus is oh, blind as a bat. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, did do we? We're just hearing casting, but nothing's happened because I missed obviously the first couple of minutes. Sure, you're just kind of blind as a bat, like behind Shack as a giant constrictor snake, and nobody's given the move yet to kind of go out into the main hall. You had magical casting, but nothing's come of it yet. Yeah, like echoes throughout the main chamber. So you can only assume that Tog has been caught. Are you there, Marcus? Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> really this is what it was like for you, Irina, that week that you were gone. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I drove through a mountain and was like, oh, <laughs> I forgot some of the part of the country doesn't have internet at all. <laughs> what do you want to do, uh, Marcus? I, I don't know what we're waiting on. You tell me. Am I standing right at the edge of the corner? Yeah, you're yeah. Cut, You're right behind Shaq because you're blinded. You have the blind status effect since your evocation has gone down. Well, I still have the 10 foot of uh, blind sight. So, so you can kind of feel around it, but once you start stepping out into the main chamber, like it's like air around you. Well, I've, I've seen it before, so... Yeah, I mean, we'll make a roll. But essentially, like, anything beyond that 10 feet is, like, blind. 
Um, but I haven't heard like a scream or anything. No, nah, nothing's or happened a, yet. A zap or a sound? I'll just nope. wait then. Okay, Brody, do we want to come back to you? Uh, yeah. Um, what are you thinking, Brady? Do you want to do anything, or are we going to Shaq? Oh, crap. Cause... Okay, I'm going to go to Shaq. Shaq, what do you want to do? I, I can't see the map yet. Um, are you... Oh, because I haven't invited oh, okay. you in. Um, let me re-invite you guys in. I I can see the map. I think everybody but Shaq is in. Okay. Marcus is not in, but Shaq, I just invited you to the board. You're just right around the corner, Shaq. Um, you can see, I think you have dark vision in your snake form. Um, what do you want to do, Shaq? Are we charging in? Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's do this. So, um, I'm going to, Shaq, you're in now. Um, I've given you permission of the big guy. Do you see that? Um, I'm all the way zoomed. Where am I? Double click your model on the left. Because you're a kid considered uh -huh. pig. Do you see yourself oh, there now? Three. Oh, yeah. So you got control of all three of these guys, right? Well, I can only summon one. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, you can summon two snakes. Let me kill off that one for you. So now you have you and your your friendly fr your friendly partner. <laughs> Where are we going, Shaq? Uh, Irina on deck. Just... Are we charging in there? Nice. I'm let's turn. Charge in. Okay, let's do it. Let me uh, turn on a torch for you so we can kind of see it. Can I? I... Can I? Do the other snake first. Yeah, it's we're not. sending in the other snake in first. Sure. Um, what's the movement of the snake? 30 feet. So do you want to move 60 and dash into the main room? Like up yeah, to there? Sure. Move your snake up to there. You see that, Shaq? There you go. Yeah, you can just move him a move. That's fine. Now, where do you want to move, Shaq? The, nothing has happened. The creature hasn't done anything because it's initiative count hasn't coming up um what are you doing are you moving in there now shack I'll, I'll move a little closer yeah okay just want to move like kind of behind it okay perfect brilliant you see shack move off you're now blinded though as yeah, you hear shack's so, uh, form uh, his sit off you know he's like he's ready for combat yeah let me get the ruler out for like movement so what i'm gonna do upon hearing him move I'm going yeah. to go to the wall, have my hand on the wall, and walk in there. Yeah. It's right here. And then. Yeah, I like that. From there, I am. So let me move your character up to there. There's your 30 feet of movement. Focus. Yep. And then I am going to cast daylight, uh, say about 20 feet into the room, or just whatever I think I would have a good understanding on. I mean, I'm going to be a little nicer to you. Like, Shaq has just moved up to here. So, like, you're kind of, your hand is, like, touching Shaq's tail. Okay. And you're, like, slithering with him. And so, you know, like, the plan, I guess, is, like, cast it sort of right in front of me. A little bit away. So, you're, like, casting into the darkness. We'll just have you make a D20, like, roll or something. You roll, like, a one through three to spell backfires in a way. Because you're, like, basically casting in the darkness. So yeah, it's a nine. I'll allow it to go off. And so we'll say it goes off like 20 feet in front of you like this. And so the, the room essentially fills up with daylight. Now, so so the, you see the statue is like is right here kind of. So it's within okay. the 40 feet of the spell now. So the daylight comes down. I know it's kind of technical. And so I'm going to place... What I do is I have these little things for it as a dungeon master. I can change the environmental effect. And I just lightened up the room a little bit. I didn't lighten it up all the way. But now you guys can kind of see the room, right? Yeah, that's a lot better. You guys see that now, kind of? Yep. I didn't want to turn it up all the way, but it gives you, like, the frame of reference. Um, let's just, first of all, I think counter spells within 30 feet, so the creature notices you casting magic, but can't get you. Counter spell, I think, is a pretty close range spell. Let me pull it up real quick, just to double check. Oh, it's range of 60, so I'm going to counterspell you. So, as a reaction. Okay? So, we'll see if the spell goes off. Uh, we both roll d20s. And we add our spell proficiency modifier. I just rolled mine. 21. I rolled a 2, so it passes. Um, so, I just rolled like another net 2, guys. 
so the daylight goes off and I've changed the effect. You guys, I could brighten it up even more, but then the, some of the side rooms, things don't have tops to them. And I didn't create hidden zones for everything, so just have to deal with it, guys. <laughs> but it's a little brighter so you can kind of see what's going on. And so yeah. now the so now the darkness around the statue is totally gone, right? And um, you know that the creature was casting inside of the uh, statue, Viridian, but you can't exactly see it. This the this head of the statue is like very well hidden. You know, behind the darkness, it's even like more barricaded, if you want to think. Okay. Um, let's go down the line to I think Irina. So can I go because I deferred my turn? So let's do the Irina, signal? then we'll do Marcus, and then we'll come back to the monster. Mm. So I roll really low at the monster, guys. Irina, what do you want to do? You're up I there. Am. You see the room is now filled with light. You you see the statue. And I'm going to try to hit it with the guiding bolts. You want to just try to hit the statue's head? Yeah. Yeah, you hit it with a 20. It's not moving, awesome. so the AC is just like 10 plus the natural armor of the statue. Um, I have HP written down for the statue. We're trying to destroy the statue. Nice. So the statue takes 19 points of damage. As a big old chunk of the statue kind of comes off. And whatever creature's in there, you hear some scurrying inside the statue. Marcus, what do you want to do? Unless, Irina, I'm assuming you're not moving. You're just kind of up yeah, there. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. There's basically, the creature is, a, story wise, the creature is like surprised, right? Even though it's all toggle, you guys all kind of bum rushed it all out at once. Marcus, what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Marcus is there really there. He's just listening along like a good audience member. No, no, no. Sorry. So it's like uh, I have to put it on mute so you don't hear like just rumblings. Oh, yeah. Like so. Boarding flight 304. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like I'm at an airport. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You see that. You see them go around the corner. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to full bore around the corner. Uh, how long, how far is it to the statue? Um, I'm assuming you can kind of sprint up to where Shaq's other snake creatures at so where you want to go like either like truly sprint or like cast misty step like i want to get as close to the statue as possible yeah um you is misty it's step a powder spell past 60 like how so, much action yeah. how much action do i need to take to get there so like five times movement or like no you can do it a, plus misty step you can definitely do it with the dash plus misty step so, so you can get uh, up to the statue but the statue this head of the statue is probably like a good 10, 15 feet in the air. So what I'm going to do, and not the misty step because it's not worth it. I'll just, I'll just do a dash action. Okay, you're behind Shaq's uh, snake in the oh, middle. So, oh, I mean, uh, I'm not a dash action. What's it called? A um, dodge. Uh, like a sprint action, just where I sprint there. Okay, you're right up next to the statue. Yeah, and I want to be like maybe like not. I don't want like something to fall on my head, but as I scream around the corner, I'm like. Poor Avris, we will, with blood and fire, we will, we will take down this creature and we will give peace back to this temple. And I scream as I'm running around the corner. <laughs> like I'm, there's, I'm not making, I'm making a lot of noise. Please, please scream in the air. I know, <laughs> I'm like, oh man, for blood and fire, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> gonna have security tackle him. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, cool. Marcus, you're kind of near this the uh the statue okay uh, i think the creature's turn is up and lice is still kind of afk uh real quick um if dwarmer was waiting for the signal of the sunlight yeah. or, or the daylight could he do his thing real quick because i'll just use a fireball um yeah if the statue will out okay sure. so that's gonna be a 20. yeah and then it's probably got like an ac of like 13 or 14 or something uh, let's see, I got two down, so I'm rolling. That's going to be 14 points of damage. The the statue of the head is almost completely undone. Um, Cool. Maybe there's something bad in the statue. <laughs> All right. Um, 
it sees Marcus, but now it sees like more creatures coming at it, right? And it can see Viridian now too. So it's going to cast an AoE spell, I think, like that. Let me look at it. It's just got a 20-foot range. So let's, let's see what we can do here. Can one of our mages counter spell? Can Dharma or Lys? Oh, Lys ain't it. Never mind. I don't think I can get Viridian plus Marcus, but I'll get Shaq and you guys. I'll get Shaq, Marcus, and Shaq. I'm sorry. Marcus, Shaq's creature, and Shaq. Um, let's check the range on uh, Dwarma. I think Dwarma could. Well, I don't know if Lice has it, and Lice is in here. How far away is he? Yeah, let's take a look. I think he's in range. No, he's not. Okay. For Dwarf. So he's just out. Because we have Lice kind of up a little further. Because I thought she might be here. It is what it is. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't shut me down. <laughs> Make ass cloud kill. So it goes out in a 20 foot range. Um,. So we're going to have Marcus make a con save or take 5d8 damage. Um, and Shaq and his creature also make saves. And I'll roll right, the damage. That's a fail. It's a con save or half damage. Can you see my roll? Yeah, we saw it. Nice. Yep. You're right. She managed to roll. Nice. We got Marcus rolling that too. So let me roll 5d6 damage here. Or 5d8, I'm sorry. So every so now the darkness has come down. The spells, con, the concentration of the creature has been broken. 27 points of poison damage. In your snake form, check. Are you resistant to poison? I don't think so. Ah, uh, not in snake. But I, I okay. passed both con saves. So you just take half damage, or 27 divided by two. Great. Let me tell you what that is. It's uh, 13 damage. And so how it works is that this cloud kill has gone down in like a sphere, like right here. Now, one thing Tail Spire doesn't do is it doesn't have persistent AoE effects like I could do in tabletop. So that's kind of one drawback. It's like, Brittian, you now can't see the statue. You see what I'm I saying? I can't? Looking through the fog is like considered obscure. Oh, gotcha. The creatures now any creature in there is considered obscured. Let's go to the top of the round to at toggle, the end of its turn. At the end of its turn, because it attacked uh, a friendly player to me, I get to move 15 feet. Half yeah. my movement. Nice. Where do you want to move? Now you can kind of see a little bit better, right? So where do you want to go? Yep. And now I can see daylight's going on, and I've got a shit long way to go. So uh, I'm gonna have to sprint, I guess. You want to move? So, did you move 15 feet already? Yep. Okay. And now you're sprint. Okay. Spring and gets me there, doesn't it? Oh, Jesus. Now we have a special action tog called sprint. You get to yeah. move up to five times. It. Cool. Awesome. So you're just kind of moving up there, through the statue. Ends, ends my turn. Nice. Yep. So you're there, toggle. <laughs> Sweet. Brittian's up. So was that a concentration spell, or is that just like the thing about that spell? You want to roll an arcana check? Um, <laughs> sure. I'll roll it. Uh, uh, you did for, succeed. So I wouldn't know no. what's going on. You just see a okay. bunch of like your daylight has gone off. A bunch of like mm -hmm. green gas has gone off. The green gas starts to seep out coming at you. So without knowing anything about it. So going in, it would hurt me. I don't know. Would it? No. Are you gonna move through it? Yeah, gonna move through it. Where do you want to move? Um, just gonna try to dash straight ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to dash uh, from where I'm at to. Okay, you're gonna move at half speed through the fog. Half speed. All yeah, because right. you can't see where you're going. Okay, so I'm going to go touch the wall and leave the fog. So I'm going right there. Okay, yeah, sure. And you can see, like, through the crack up there, that's one kind of cool thing with the 3D model. It's like you kind of know that the fog is, like, it's not, like, permeating the whole room, right? And I don't think you were playing with us way back in our our first game where uh, Lucius went up there and got hit with this or whatever. But it's similar. <laughs> Remember that, guys? 
Make a con save. Uh, 12. Uh, so you failed. You take 5d8 damage. Let me roll it up. It's poison damage. 18. So I rolled kind of low now. Okay. You breathe this like noxious fumes, and yeah, you make it out the other side, but you're coughing and wheezing. You wonder if like you can hold your breath, maybe. And you could sur maybe survive it, but it's unknown. Um, let's go down the neck, down the line to uh, Dwarma. Um, so the only thing that will really reach. So Dwarma, like, let's use our little thing here. I just took that down, but if you actually like use Dwarma here, which is kind of cool, yeah, see like this, you can actually draw these kind of cool three-dimensional lines, and see like Dwarma. Probably, he could maybe hit the top of the statue. Let's take a look again. If I put out the sphere, we want to be. He's real got protected. misty step, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Can I go through? And I was talking with Dorm a little bit about you know how he should be playing his character more, like because he kind of is like standing back a lot of the time, casting spells. Like he's really a blade singer. Like he should be up there in melee most of the time, you know, doing stuff. Um, if I look kind of like if I try to get in a position or like look from Dorma's angle, I'm actually looking through it. Yeah, he could target the top of the the statue's head. From your position, okay. like you're in a tactically good spot, you're behind three fourths cover. Cast fireball. The, the statue's heavily damaged. You could probably destroy it. Yeah, so it's a twenty. Well, I lost connection to the board. I'm trying to reconnect. Okay, it looks like it might have reconnected. Did you guys lose connection? Yeah, just for a second. Yeah, it says waiting on GM now. Okay, yay! I got reconnected. It's back up. See, so yeah, Arena's in here, and so Shack, but I don't know if anybody else got in. Looks like we lost Jamie. Uh, I'm here. Are you on the board? Mm hmm. Let me just send out a re invite to everybody, make sure we're okay. Looks something might have happened with the Tail Spire servers. Okay, did you roll your hit? Yeah, it was 11 points. So it didn't it didn't break through the statue's AC. Um, Marcus is up. No, no, it, 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 I hit for 20. Oh, my bad. The top of the yeah. statue debilitates. The creature is now exposed. Um, it looks like, um, like a wolf, like a fox-like creature. That's the best way to describe it. It looks like a fox. No, no pictures? I can try to show you. guys want me to show you the picture? Sure. Yeah, like link it in Discord or something. I mean, Foxes. It's like a fox, but it's like wearing human clothing. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. Okay. Oh, okay. There that we go. That is not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting some undead. Jamie, don't, don't ruin it. <laughs> Jamie probably knows every creature in the monster manual. Okay. That's I what it looks like. It's, it's exposed, so now it loses us three-fourths cover. But it's uninjured. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, We're going players. to Marcus. Marcus, what do you want to do? I've described it. You see the creature up there, but you're standing in, like, a bunch of gas. So can I, like, uh, get to the creature, or is it just, like... 10 feet in the air. Right now, you don't know what's going on because you're like in gas, essentially. But you hear like the warm screen out like, I see the creature. <laughs> so you know if the creature's exposed or something near the statue. You just have to like walk forward. Um, you got to roll a con save though, yeah. right? Well, I presume I'm like very close to it, right? Because yeah. I'm my turn. Let me take so a look here. So can I hit it with my sword or... If you start your turn there, you got to make a con save. Yeah, it's fine. But I, I already rolled your con save right from last time. It's, right it's only on the start of your turn, guys. Okay. So um, you don't need to roll a con save. Okay? Do you understand how this... I'm just okay. describing how the spell works. Why don't you... Um, you can walk forward, though. I want to smash it with my sword. How do I do that? Um, Let me take a look. I mean, right now, so you take you take a step forward, you look up, you see the creature. Um, it, it would be difficult, but maybe you could, like, I could move your model up there, and we can, like, have you stand on the shoulders. Let me uh, move this creature up there, maybe. Let me reveal the creature, first of all. I don't think I can move it up there. Um, I'm saying, actually, the creature's flying. Okay. 
So the creature's actually flying now in place of where the head was at. Um, you just have to make like a balance check, right? Try to stand on the shoulder to try to w uh, get at it. To like whap it. Do you want to try to misty step up there and make a, um, a, a check? It would be a um, an acrobatics check. I didn't really expect it to like pop out of the head flying. As a natural fly speed, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah, it looks kind of weird, doesn't it, guys? Welcome to D and D. This is one of the uh, Wiz Wizards I mean, the Coast I, creature guys. Just simply step out of the gas. No, uh, I've really already moved you out of the gas, so you now see the creature. I've described how you can go up and whap it. You have to misty step up there as a bonus action, make a um, an acrobatics check, and then I'll allow you to like. If you succeed on the acrobatics check, you won't fall off. The sword, like the spirit of the sword in your bag, like glistens with magical energy. <laughs> you can hear it speak. It. I'm going to come back to you. Yeah, I'll yeah. come back to you. Shaq, you're up. Uh, do I take damn if I move out of this poison? We already rolled your save right. We should have rolled it on the start of your turn. So you've already taken the damage because you start your turn in the poison. All right, so I can, can I just go up and hit him? Um, yeah, you have the reach, reach right? You have a 10 foot yeah. reach. I'm going to say like, I'm looking at the model here. I'm looking at your model. And the model of the creature, I'm assuming, yeah, you can get up there. Both your creatures. I, I scream at Shaq. I was like, pull them down here. <laughs> Go ahead, Shaq. Make some attack rolls. Can I? Is it possible to pull them down? I think as a part of your snake form, that's what some, like, as some creatures are monster Shaq, it's a part of your natural attack. So you just make a roll. If you hit it, then you, the creature's automatically grappled with you. I have to roll a strength yeah, check. Grapple and make him pull his ass it's a down part there. of the feature of the snake. Roll an attack roll Hot. to see if you hit the creature. You uh, are you so nice nice to the table as well when you get shot. Sure. Three. Yeah, it worked. Um, but what's your modifier is snake form? It's plus six. Yeah, so add, tell me the total. It has a pretty high AC. A nine. Yeah, it's a pretty Ooh. high AC. So yeah, did not hit. Well, I can attack that, too. Okay, that's your attack from the other creature. Now Shaq is attacking. There we go. Nice. That's a hit. So uh, roll some damage up. For starters, right? We roll damage first. Is it a bite or a constrict? You're biting because you haven't grappled the creature to constrict it yet, right? Okay. Let me pull up the creature just to help you out. Called giant snake. Could you resend the in invite for me? Yeah, I, don't, it's not it's not working anyway. It's okay, so guys. Got to totally restart. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I totally restart. It's called a giant constrictor snake, right, Jack? One yeah. thing at a time, guys. See how it says? Um, you hit one um, the bite. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a bite. So you either do a bite or a constrict attack, right? Yeah. So you actually do, um, you do the constrict attack as your action attack. That's the one you're doing with, okay? Instead of the bite, so you're gonna roll the constrict damage, which is two d eight four plus four. Yeah. So how I'm gonna do it? It's. It's if the attack hits, he's grappled. Yeah, I don't know if you make the save right away, though, to avoid the grapple. That's kind of how it works with vamps. You don't. When you're trying yeah. Constrictor, uh, it just auto-grapples like vampires. Let me take a look here. The vampire. Then you've got to make a strength saving throw to get out. There's no save against it. It's just auto. Normally. How, it wor how I... Um, I'm saying like, yeah, the target can grapple you, but I'll, I say the um, escape DC is 13. So the creature gets to roll the escape roll right off the bat because it's considered like a grapple check in a way. But the grapple check DC is automatically set. So I'll roll it for the creature. It says mine is 16. We're on mm -hmm. the, the snake sheet. Yeah, but you do damage though automatically. The grapple check is conditional. Right? So I'm going to roll up 
strength check for the creature. I rolled a nat 20. The creature flies out of the way, but it still gets hit a little bit by the constrict. That's the way I'm kind of ruling. Is that okay, Tog? What do you think? Uh, it's how you want to do it. It's up to you. I'll look into it more after the game. <laughs> yeah, gen generally, generally with grapples and creatures, um, it's different versus. Here's the players. thing, guys. I don't like how things "quote unquote" automatically work. I always want to give the player or the creature a chance to break the effect, because otherwise, yeah. it's like just like a vorpal sword hits you, well, your head just cuts off. Well, rather that you make a DC uh, con save to just take damage. Long rather than works both ways, then it's fine. Yeah, it just works both ways. Same with the grapple check from the vamps. Um, you guys will be able to break out of that. right? It just makes sense. Um, otherwise, the creature would just be grappled. It, but it does take damage from you, Shaq. How much damage do you do? Well, Nice. The creature is barely wounded. Okay. Let's go down the line. Who's up? Let's see who's up, guys. Sorry. That was a long term for Shaq. Irene is up, and then the creature... Irene is up. Can I enlarge Marcus from where I am? It's a 30-foot spell. 30-foot reach spell? Yeah. So yeah. how I'm going to do range. you, Irina, see, like, right there? You're here. Mm -hmm. So this is the range of the spell like that. So no, you can't. You could enlarge. You can't even enlarge Viridian. You see that? Like, if you actually look at Viridian there, you can't even get him. Because he's too far. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, then I will. Are the rest of you on the board? Um, I just see Irene and Shaq here. Here's what I'm going to do. I re you guys right now, before the creature's turn come up, we'll finish with Irina's here, and then I'll reload the board. Irina, what do you want to do? Um, let's see. Um, you can see the creature. Um, flying like about out of the statue's head. Try to hit it with the guiding bolts again. Okay. It's just a hit very roll. Terrible. Yeah, that's yeah. too low this time, unfortunately. Yeah. The creature's very nimble. Um, you actually see the bolt hit the creature's skin and it like just repels off. Okay, now I'm going to reload the board. Um, let me exit out of this real quick. I don't want to mess I anything do my, up. I uh, turn now that I see that Jack hasn't been able to grapple him. Yeah, just give me a second, Marcus. One thing at a time, guys. No, you're fine. What do you want to do? Okay. Okay. <laughs> just keep toggling back if you say I'm muted. No, you're fine. Uh, I'm going to try to do this and see what happens. I'm going to try to cast a uh, hold person. Okay. Let me see what type the creature type is. Oh, Lysandra just messaged me. Um, Lysandra is sick. She's been throwing up all day. <laughs> so now we know the real answer behind what's going on with her. Well, she's not going to be here because she's been throwing up. Uh, let me look up the creature type, Marcus. Fiend. Yeah. Stop cheating, Tog. I know it off by it out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, yeah, the spell fails. It's not considered humanoid. And then I'm going to use my bonus um, ability to cast a uh, valve, valve emanate. All right. How do you curse? The, how do you do it to the creature? Don't get arrested. Avarice, Avarice requires blood. All right. <laughs> um, let me try to reinvite everybody to the board here again. Were you able to get? It looks like we got everybody back in. I just realized saying, is he calling out a new god's name? Yeah, he's calling out the he, new god yeah, from the he, sword. Yeah, he definitely has been. He's Same. definitely missing that hex blade stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what the creature wants to do. So the creature has a concentration spell down. So immediately the the um the cloud goes out another ten feet. So now it has a thirty foot range. So I'm saying it's like this now. Tog is still out of the range of the cloud as the cloud begins to kind of just slowly creep out, almost like a mist. Let's see what the creature wants to do. The creature's almost near the ceiling. Oh, not really. 
actually about halfway up. I'm actually going to cheese ball this even harder since it's getting kind of surrounded. So what I'm going to do is recast that spell. Yeah, actually, it's going to just... It's going to um, recast um, Cloud Kill, but it's going to hit everybody now on the start of its turn. So it's going to do it like this. But it's actually from like the statue from up here. So there's the more realistic like that. So it's centering it up. It's ca casting it on itself. It can hurt itself with Cloud Kill, can it? I don't know. Can it talk? Unless it's immune to poison. <laughs> so um, now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to... Shaq, you feel the creature move away from you. You get an attack of opportunity with you and your creature at disadvantage. With both creatures as a reaction. Since you're basically now blinded. So I'm going to move the creature. Well, I do have 10 feet of blind sight. As a snake. Oh, do you? <laughs> so do. you don't get disadvantage. Maybe you'll right. grapple it too. <laughs> Attack number one. It's a nine plus six, which is 15. That does not hit. Attack number two. A nat 20. Woo! <laughs> nice little critical. Is that from you or the, we'll say it's from you. Daddy Shack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do some, let's do the damage first. And then I'll make a, a bite, right? Yeah. And I cast a spell first to try to give Sh Shaq disadvantage, so I'll make a concentration check as well. Six plus four, which is ten. Um, ten plus I do twelve, right? Because we do max damage on the other roll because you hit a critical. Roll another d twenty to see if you do a super critical. I'm gonna roll. Um, so the it's just a DC 10 concentration check. Let's see if it has a concentration save. It does not. It's con. Yeah, it's a con save. Con. It doesn't. Con. It does. It it fails its concentration check. So the oh. the mist goes down, but it moves out of the way. Let's see where it's gonna move to. So the spell tries to go off, but Shaq hits it with a pretty devastating attack. As you guys see, Shaq's coil up and snap into the creature. Um, Thank God for that. Let me just take a look at it, Shaq, and let's see if it gets Which away. Grappled now, and there's no I'm going to have to see if it's grappled. Okay. No, I'll say... Um, so the cloud kill goes down. Let me uh, roll a strength check with the creature. It is now grappled with you, Shaq, as well. So I'm going to move the creature down. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Here we go. Moving it down to kind of daddy Shaq. I got for that. Otherwise, I was just going to stand there like a pleb. Whoop. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's go down the line, guys. So it tried to do something kind of slick, Shaq, and it got caught. By your blind sight. Um, it's me. Uh, toggles up. I'm assuming oh, it's like man. grappled. It's kind of still 10 feet up in the air, but I'll allow you guys to kind of wail on it if you want to. Yep, that's what I'm doing. That's what I do. Let's take I'm going to do all the axes. I'm going to run up to it and start wailing. Are you raging? Oh, yes. Okay. Rage and attack number one. Ooh. Okay, me. this creature is restrained, okay? Okay, so, that's advantage on attack rolls. Yeah, you do get an advantage on attack rolls. I think is, okay, that's good. you're not attacking Reckless? No. Okay. Not a minute. Start wailing uh, it down, so guys. Maybe you guys will destroy it. First, 25 for the first hit. Uh, for, oh, uh, eight plus eight, 16, 16 damage for the first hit. Okay. Second hit, rolling with advantage. Uh, 22 to hit. That's got another eight. Um, got a uh, 17 AC. It's another eight damage. Alrighty. And then my offhand attack. Oh, still with advantage. 
21 to hit, so hit for another 8 points of damage. It's getting badly injured. Let's take a look here. It's bloody. And that's the end of my turn. There you go. This fox-like creature, like, yelps out a little bit as Shaq is constricting it. We should have had Shaq roll some concentration checks, but we failed to do so. That's okay. We'll let it slip. Um, go down the line, guys. Uh, who's up next? I have to, ta I have to ta ta oh, toggle nice. back. It's Viridian. What's up? You're kind of out there. The mist has gone down. You've seen the creature try to do some slick magic and got caught. All right. So I'm going to go closer. This thing always messes. At least Marcus found the exit. So here's how it works, Brittian. You can't use the you can't do the measurement tool and the move tool. You can't drop and drag the model. It's like a bug or whatever. You can't do them simultaneously, unfortunately. Right. So I moved. Uh, yeah, you moved your range. Yeah. What do you want to do? Um, I want to cast um, Bane on it. So it's a Christmas 16. Okay, let me roll it up. I'm just rolling it easily in the the other sheet from 5e tools. What's a DC? Uh, 16. Passes with an 18. Okay. It's your turnover. Yeah. So I have a question. So Bane's a concentration. So would it be every turn he tries to do that or? Yeah. You just like reapply it, I think. No, if, if so, your blood goes Bane, down. Or now, does it have to? No, um, your blood also goes down. Less goes down. And I didn't have less on anybody, so no. oh. any other concentration goes down. It just fails, basically. Oh, it just fails okay. then. Yeah, just that makes sense. Fails. Okay. So, yeah, so it only would you'd only maintain that concentration if it actually succeeded. Gotcha. And you got to pay attention sense. to some of the wording on it. it. Says like on the start of the creature's turn. That's what I did with the cloud kill too. Right. Dwarm is up. All right. Um, Marcus on deck, then Shaq. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, firebolt away. Yeah, just firebolt. That's the only really thing in range without having you get. To burn. Uh, you don't no, get advantage, I don't think. Let me take a look on the restraint status effects. It's a ranged attack. Nope. <coughs> so I'm just going to roll for it. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage. So you have advantage, Shaq. Um, you have advantage. Roll again. Uh, I think they both miss. Let's see. I got 11 and 14. Yeah, they both miss, unfortunately. Let's go down the line of Marcus. Want to whap it? Going to use... Yeah, I'm going to use the... Uh, no, I don't have any Warlock spells, right? No, you do not. I'm just going to... Mash it with my my great sword, just regular attack. Okay. AC is seventeen. The creature is bloodied. That's a hit. Twenty-two. Yeah. Pull some damage. I'm gonna cast a uh, smite on it too. Okay. It's not on. It's a fiend. I don't know if you get extra damage from that. I don't know. It might take I think it's only undead. We'll just say it's undead for now. Undead and demons. Yeah, so it's not a demon. Roll up the damage, Marcus. Demon squirrel. It says against undead <laughs> or fiends. What is it? The fiend. Yeah, so it, it does an extra D8. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, 3D8. Okay, hold on one second. <clears throat> Marcus is going off on it. So, 12... Plus, whoops. Marcus is tabbed out of uh, Zoom, so we yeah, don't see I'm his beautiful rolling. face. Yeah, I see that. Plus 14. <laughs> so I think that was 26. Nice. And then my second attack. Okay. You're attacking oh, with advantage, right? Uh, oh, sorry. I, yeah, I am. Yeah. Actually, I'm talking with like double advantage or whatever, right? So you get plus two to the roll Let as me well. Try and see if I can just fish for a crit. Yeah. Nah. So let's Oops, roll some sorry, damage. That was, a, that, that was a miss roll, whatever that was. Yeah. Butterfingers. Um, yeah. It's almost dead, guys. It's on. 
It's well bloodied. Okay, I'm out of. I'm out of. Uh... You guys ran away from this pitiful creature shack. It's required <laughs> one little grapple roll. Um, Pussies. A different story if it was flying. Huh? Right, no kidding. Oh, maybe. Okay, so rolling for damage. Uh, 14. Plus. 14. 28. Yeah. How do you kill the creature? I don't know why it's rolling, like, randomly. I or think it's just because it's a little lag from your end. How do I kill it? I was like, Averest requires blood. <laughs> Marcus buries his great sword and destroys the face of this creature coiled up around Shaq's tight constrictor body with a sickening crunch. Blood sprays all over your new skin, Shaq. What do you guys do? I'm going to pull the out room the hilt goes of that sword again. Why? And be like, I, was, I pull out the hilt of the sword and I say, now what? Now what? I'm just like screaming in the, I guess this like <laughs> chambered area. The sword like responds, like quickly search for it. I feel it. It's close. I start looking around the, the like rummaging the around statue. a little bit. Yeah, the statue just like almost like haphazard like. Are we bringing Dwarma down and Lysandris down to the room now? I think everyone's yeah. going to come, come, come down. The room, the room yeah. goes cold. Let me. Ch you guys can hear the ambience, but let me uh, play a little bit of music too. Okay. As they're coming down, I'm going to like search around the statue, see if anything stands out to me. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what you guys find. Good um, job on the kill. Oh, we'll have Irina roll um, an Arcana roll. Shaq, you like slowly uncoil. The creature like falls limp. So you see it splattered like crunched face. Marcus. Seven, is, 17. Yeah, Marcus has some bloodless eyes. You've maybe heard about this creature or something like that. It's, you know, an Arcana Loth. I think that's how you say the name of it. It's um, uh, this creature um, searches like for magical items. It's always trying to find magical items. And so somehow it's here. And you guys are searching the body of the creature. Let's see what it has. Creature does like to collect magical items, I've heard, so we should search this place well. We'll have uh, the Marcus. Sword is not only it had a pair, it was wearing a, a, a small, some spectacles, guys. It was wearing some glasses. We'll see if Marcus smashed the face of it. He has got a, Marcus got to roll a d20. If he rolls a 10 or higher, the glasses are smashed and they lose half their value, but they could be repaired. God damn. So they're smashed. Um, it has um, small gold spectacles worth 125, right? They're broken. I will add that. You um, toggle. Feel free to copy paste that over to the group blue sheet, right? As I'm pasting it into our game chat, unless you want me to add it. It has um, a robe, Irina. You're like that bondling through the robe. And it has like a bunch of different pockets. The robe is obviously like Dwarma like waves his wand. I think Dwarma has a wand of detect magic, right? The statue isn't magical, but the robe is like Dwarma says, I think this robe has been altered by uh, alteration magic. <laughs> Am I doing a good voice impression of him? That was good. <laughs> That he has a nasal to his voice, right? Perfect. I do have the identify spell if we wanted to take the time to identify it. By all means, Irina. <laughs> Mark it on their right, spell yeah. sheet for the third level spell, right? Yeah. Um. So, uh, it's a ro it's called a robe of useful items. I'll link it right now. 
it's pretty cool. It has a bunch of like different pockets, and each one of these pockets has like an item in it that can be used. The items in these pockets. It takes you guys like a few minutes to do this. I'm going to turn on our game time. And I'll mark the time up. To go through the items and stuff in the middle of the room is going to take a few minutes. So I'll mark it like, but we'll move the time up by like three or four minutes. It also has some more stuff. Let me link what else that. So that's just what's on it right now. It also has a spell book. Okay. The spell book has a lot of different spells in it. And Dwarm is like, wow. <laughs> so it's got a bunch of different spells, but they would need to begin to be like transcribed over. I don't know if Dwarma has the magical links and stuff like that to transcribe the spells over and stuff. And um, I'll, I'll link that later, but it's got a bunch of different spells in it that could be used. Um, he has a bow? I was just going to say, just to clarify, there's a just to clarify, <laughs> do I pull a horse out of a pocket? So it's like kind of like a, <laughs> if you think about it, it's almost like a bag of holding made for like specific items that someone would find useful, I guess. And you think about this creature, Irina, like it must have been trying to collect these items or whatever, you know, the statue drawn oh, by the clerk. <laughs> John, uh, you're just gonna have your pockets filled with horses and then just throw horses <laughs> at people. It I want the mastiffs. I want the mastiffs. I'm a dwarf. I'm gonna put saddles on them. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I want. I want a drawing of that. <laughs> what do you guys do? Oh God, this is this is like that. Sorry, I'm just that. frantically this searching is... the room. This is a pretty awesome jacket. Um, I like um. it. <laughs> Marcus is like hell bent. Um, you look over at Shaq, Marcus, and you wonder, like, in his snake form, maybe he can like help you to the top of the statue to search where this little maybe alcove where the creature was at. Marcus, you want to search the top of the statue? Search everywhere. <laughs> I'll kind of lift him up and put him in. Yeah, we'll move Shaq over a little closer, and then Marcus like goes to the top of the statue. You find it, Marcus. It's like a crystal rod, and you have the sword, the hilt of the sword in your hand. It's like the sword says, At "Long last, it's there." And if you think back to Madame Eva's reading and all that about how you find the hilt, found the hilt, it doesn't appear to be impressive, but what do you do? Somehow this yeah. Arcanoloth has come into the other part of the sword. I was like, it's time to be reunited and take back this land. I grab the other part. <clears throat> so long have I been separated. Let me pull up the item. <laughs> I turned to the other guys like, do you guys think Marcus is acting a little different? <laughs> Since we came back <laughs> to the temple. Yeah. He said he would never forsake his god, and then he's shouting out another god's name. Ah, uh, each did her own, whatever. <laughs> you guys see Marcus reach out and place the crystal rod, essentially, into the hilt of the sword up on top of this little alcove. Um, he Shaq lets him down, I guess, so he's onto the ground, so he can kind of doesn't have to make any like dexterity checks or anything up there. He's kind of over here, I'm guessing. This is what it is. The Holy Sword of Voltun. It's been reforged. Wait, does it instantly reforge? Every so he put Dwarma says he would like to have the jacket. <laughs> He's not having a jacket. You heard him. We'll have a, we'll have a, 
He can have the spells and shit out like that. I just want all the weird items that are in the jacket pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you want the rowboat? <laughs> I want everything that is in there. You never the iron know. Door. door. Oh, yeah. You know, this I'm place... I'm putting other stuff in it. Uh, it doesn't really work like that. Each pocket has like kind of like a stitching, a magical stitching. It only is allowed to have like... I'd have to read up on the item talk, but I think you can only have that specific item in it, the pocket. Okay. I'll look up into it more if you want to, but with the proper oh, magic yeah. and stuff like that, maybe um, it can be remade. Maybe Dwarma can do something with enough gold I've and time. Uh, i got a question, eh? Sure. Like, the, the one that says Iron Door, can I, like, if I was to take the door out as I'm holding it, would I be able to direct it? What I, I don't know. Uh, what, does it just it's pop out heavy. and fall on the floor? Yeah, it's like pulling something out of a bag of holding, really. I guess it's just like it kind of like funnels and shrinks into the pocket, and then it funnels out and like pulls it out. You're like, uh, uh, you pull out the door, like, you know, as some of like the dust on the floor of the of this temple. Now, Beridian, you cast a daylight. The daylight's still persistent in here. You guys have been in here like a few minutes, but no other creatures like have come out and like attacked you. So, That's good. like, you must be thinking like, I'm gonna give Dwarma the jacket and then try, try to say to him, try and take out the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Tog. Now we'll see if Dwarma wants to. I want to see crush him. <laughs> <laughs> Dwarma says, "I'll give all my booze and gold for that jet." Check it, talk. How much gold do you have? I don't know. I'd have to look on my character sheet. I don't have your character sheet pulled up. I guess he hands you like 100 gold coins. Yeah, it's not enough. Well, I don't know. Don't be a greedy dwarf. got 231. <laughs> so, Marcus, the sword, you see it like it's like I was, for, um, was forged by the gods for the last war. Wielded by Fortune herself. But she fell in the last war. Avris will be our new god. Don't you agree? For passion and blood to get rid of this land, nothing will stop us. Tear, me told. Voltoon, these gods are all too weak now. We must find a new god to serve. And blood is what, blood is what we must seek. The sword like lights up in a blaze of light. I linked you guys kind of the sword. Let me link it for our chat mm. too, because it's pretty cool. Can I, I have a drink? my daily uh, blood ration from this squirrel guy? The blood kind of goes close. Clo I'm going to say yeah, because the blood is like kind of warm. Roll a d20. If you roll a 5 or lower, it doesn't work. His blood's got to be through a pumping heart, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, because it's not fresh enough. Does the uh, jacket take attunement sorts? I don't know. Um, you just have to load it into D&D &D Beyond. Yeah, a 7. <laughs> I'm assuming it does. I'll give it to Duomar anyway. So it, um, I said a five or lower, so it works, Irina. Yeah. yeah so it works for today. <laughs> That's right. What do you guys do? I give Duomar the coat, and I say it'd be funny seeing you getting that iron door out the pocket. <laughs> so here's what the sword does, by the way, Marcus. It searches out your soul to see if you've sworn off tear. Have you sworn off tear? Or do you want to make a deception roll? <clears throat> no, I, I tell the sword. Cause I, do I sense it? It's searching out your heart to see if you, you're in agreement with serving the goddess of bloodlust. Yeah, so I speak back to it, and I was like, blood can be sought through vengeance, and vengeance is what we will have. We can finally kill Strahd. Let us go and destroy him immediately. What do you do? 
I looked at my companions and I was like, I think we're ready. Wait, you're talking to us or you're talking <laughs> to that weird fucking sword again? He's he's a part of us now. Okay. I just turn I just turn to the group and go, he's gone fucking mad. <laughs> Marcus, I, I didn't want to mention it, but in, in my dream, from what you told me, I, I think I saw your sister. She had not been turned into a bride. I thought that might bring you some comfort to know that at least in this dream vision I had, she seemed to be alive and not turned into a vampire. I put my hand on your shoulder and I was like, that's the best news this cursed land's ever produced, Irina. Thank you. Congratulations on reuniting the sword. I <laughs> hope that you are the one to be able to slay the evil master and free our land forever. I think we'll all do our best. <clears throat> There's a reason why we're here. Um, maybe we should uh, get out of here. Maybe, you know, Strad knows that we've reformed the sword. I don't know. Yeah, he may have felt that for sure. Yes, I agree. We should uh, definitely leave these cold halls while we still can. Dwarma says, I've never known a dwarf to leave so much treasure behind. Wait, there's treasure? I thought we got everything. Well, you pulled out an iron door. It's not much, but there was a bag of gold in there. Oh, I already took that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I palmed that. That was the first thing I noticed. <laughs> Granted, life was changed by one of the stones, but... Should we be so hasty to leave? There could be many more valuables that creature's known to collect. Where do you want to go to, Tog? Uh, uh, Dorma asks. I kind of look around because we still got daylight. What can I can I see the other like doors? I don't know. Can you? No, I can't see shit. Well, there's other. <laughs> there's like the um, where you kind of came out of here. I mean, this is a pretty. I mean, it is what it is. Like you're in a giant chamber, essentially. Um, this giant, like, nameless god statue stands before you. It's not magical, because like I said, Dwarma like waved his magic wand to detect all the magical items, but there's like a bunch of ruins, doorways to the left, I think. Let me take a look here on my map. So do you guys wanna like you see look like some more? You see like this rubble here to your immediate left, and it looks like it goes into a chamber of some kind. Just like if you're telling me like, hey, what's around? Like, that's what it looks like around. There's also another hallway over here. What do you guys want to do? I would put it put it to the vote. Look for treasure or leave just in case Strahd turns up. Marcus has the sword so he can go kill him. While we look. <laughs> well, are we going to go to Ravenloft then, Tark? Is that oh, what we're planning we're to do? going to help them werewolves that Shaq had promised to help. Try to keep that commitment. Yeah, I agree. It's nine o'clock. We start traveling at night. It could be dangerous. Alma, for whatever reason, you've got a lot more irritating lately. <laughs> 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 well, maybe you could make your little tent thingy out outside, and we could stay in that, so we're invisible, and then take off on horses 
Now you pointed out the fin at the back, I'm going to kind of wander over and have a peek. Stealthily. Try and move across the rock and see what's in this back room. Make a stop roll. I like your idea, Irina. Oh, come on. 14. It, it was hovering on 20 and it just kept circling. <laughs> I went to it's 8. Spinning. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't represent like dwarven stoneworking, but it appears to be like a plundered treasury talk. Someone had oh. must have come here from, you know, the wizards that served here probably had lots of magical items and things and scrolls. Like you guys found a potion, I think, up above. Right, Irina? In the one room, the potion of invulnerability. In the other room. And this, this appears to like be a like... Room. I'm going to look around. <laughs> um, yeah. The amber door. I know that, I got that staff of frost. Yeah. The amber doors that once sealed this great stone room have been smashed. There are pieces lying amid the crushed bones, armor, and weapons. So there's there are some items maybe in here you want to go in and search? Yeah, I'm going to have a look around. I'll shout over to Orma and tell him to come look with me. Oh. Um, Orma kind of meanders over some of the rubble and then Tog is attacked by a specter. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's see if we can pull out the specter. They don't have him in the room for some reason. Some old spirit has been disturbed in this room, Tog. And to go messing with the treasure. Oh no, Tog. <laughs> There it is. Someone mentioned treasure earlier. It could pink my interest. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a surprise round attack on you. Oh, you yeah. Of... 100%. So, let me see if I can pull up the encounter. Or we're going to roll. I'll now. roll initiative for everyone. Or tell everybody we're going to roll initiative now. Um, everybody roll initiative and I'll call it out. Todd, did you roll your, rolled yours already? 21? Yeah, 21. But yeah. it gets a random attack on me. Yeah. How it would technically work is you'd have the surprise status condition on you. Um, and then... Let me do Let me do this. That means me. that we just roll through the first round of combat. But you, as a surprise, it means it skips over your turn. Uh, Marcus, what'd you get? Oh, for uh, initiative? Yeah. Shaq? 20. Dwarma? Dwarma got nine. We're going to keep Dwarma and Lex out of it now. Okay. Just to simplify things. Uh, Beridian? Uh, 17. Irina? 16. Uh, Marcus? 18. Okay. Let's start off with the Spectre. Come on, it didn't record it. Um, I'm going to say Tog and went ahead of me and then I'll go again and then everybody else can go. It didn't record the initiative. Sorry guys. Um the first attack, a life draining a touch. Did you see that roll tog? No. Let me uh, turn on the game log real quick. Let me roll it up. Just a plus four. There it goes. Now I see it. Twenty two. <laughs> it's three D six necrotic. Um, the target must save a DC 10 con save, or its HP max is reduced by the amount of 14, right? 16. So you passed it, so your HP max is not reduced. Um, I'm going to start up, uh, toggle your up, then I'm up, and then everybody else. Okay, I'm going to shout out to let everyone else that I'm getting attacked. Hey, you wee prick! <laughs> Uh, pull out both my axes, uh, rage and yeah, reckless. Screw it. All right. Look um, into this ghoulish figure of like a robed figure, a dead wizard from long ago. I'm gonna start fucking attacking it. Yeah. Twenty six nice to hit. It has an AC of twelve. Okay, so first is might just kill it straight up. 11 plus 
another five. Uh, Bradley 16. and Dream. Yeah, first bad. attack, yeah. second attack. Level eight, guys. Oh. Of, uh, a froze. I'm wrong. You need help in there, Toggle? <laughs> For some reason it won't let me click advantage. 26 to hit. Yeah, it's a hit. How do, you, uh, how do you kill it? Eight points of damage. I just bury my axe in the side of its neck and kind of... You said it was skeletal-like Wraith. Watch its head just creak to the side <laughs> as it falls to the ground. It, like dissipates into like the dust. Just vaporizes. Never mind, I just got surprised by a curtain. What? What's I'll going be, uh, on in there, Tog? I hear you getting mad again. It was just a curtain. Don't mind me. Must be some boxes in there. Yeah, lots of boxes. Uh, I'm going to carry on looking through the room. <laughs> okay, make an investigation roll. Lysandra says to Marcus and like Irina and Brady and the guys out in the hallway with the main area, she says... I know that we're eager to leave, but my whole purpose was coming to Barovia was to find a secret to bring back my father. I heard of this, the legend of this temple, and I believe my god is trying to speak to me here. What are you saying? I don't know. We have to find him. Can I get uh, Dwama to help me? Yeah, roll with advantage. That was the whole point of calling call him over. Yeah, roll, roll with advantage for Dwama. Can he roll? <laughs> no. Because he's not here. Oh. Sad times. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> Nothing in here, so it seems, dog. I've got, I've got good, in, I've got a good investigation. You want me to come help? <laughs> Uh, too late now I've rolled yeah <laughs> what do you guys do I'm not very smart I walk past over all the shiny stuff go to a box smash it turn around walk out <laughs> yeah well um, in Love regards you. to what Lysandra says uh, we'll, we'll, I just say well we didn't tell Emil and Sven when we would come and help so if if everyone else is all right for it, we can still peruse this temple of of curses a bit longer. Oh, uh, that was just a bunch of junk in this room. <laughs> How about that one? I'm gonna start walking over to the other side of the room. There's another. Well, I think at that point, seeing him just start to go into full blown search mode. Uh, I'm gonna start following him. You guys can move your models. Yeah, we're kind of tired. Right right. Where's the other room? I read. Right. Yeah, I'm just getting straight and seeing what I see. Are we following these guys now? Are we starting to search throughout the Amber Temple? Are we taking off? Sure. Or I think what we, are we should doing? stay as a group. So I think we're just yeah. gonna come chasing after Tog. Yeah. Moving. No, no, uh, I can't take anymore. Are you shape shifting we back? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, now that you say that, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll stay. Yeah. You know, it's we'll... awesome to be a giant snake, Shack. Embrace the role play. <laughs> Embrace the role play, Shaq. That's um... all right, slivering. All right, let's describe this room before we start going through here, right? As you're going through this area, talk right here where like Bridian's at, mm -hmm. like back here in this little hallway. The arched hall rises to a height of 20 feet. You can see your reflections like in the wall, but the images don't mirror your movements. Instead, they wave their arms and scream silent warnings to you. Uh -oh. do, you do you continue to go into the main hall? No. <laughs> do you stop? I, if, if they're saying waving at me in the fin, I kind of point it out to everyone else. Everybody kind of sees this. I might be stupid, but... <laughs> oh, that's stupid. What do you make of that, wizardy people? Um, whoever wants to roll an arcana roll can. Because you stand in front of the um, or these try. reflections in the walls. 
like the mirror reflections don't match her. Oh own. no. <laughs> yeah, not high enough. I needed a bardic inspiration myself. <laughs> or the roll, yeah. <laughs> I'll wave at them and see if they change at all. How long are we waiting for? I just I just wave at them to see if it changes anything. And then I point in a direction to see which way they thumbs up. <laughs> They just, nothing seems to be happening, Tonk. It's just kind of, so, just, they're kind of warning you. I'm going to say a minute goes by. Ah, screw it, I'm getting in. Yeah, let's just go. To the left, Tog, you see like a bunch of rubble, like it's, like the, the temple has been caved in. Let me describe this hallway. Yeah, like over here to the left, Tog, you see like just a bunch of rubble that goes right up to the ceiling. Straight ahead, there's like some doors. Now you guys are outside the daylight spell. It's like light, but the light AOE spells do not go around corners. So like over here, it's just darkness. But you see a door, like a couple of doors, like straight in front of you into some separate rooms. The doors are shut. I light a torch for the people that can't see. Okay, light a tor torch up. The darkness of the caverns in the hallway illuminate as black amber. Irina moves ahead down the hallway. What are we doing? Are we going door by door or are Do we just going to... Yeah, Do y'all want to open this one first? I mean, there's, there's one, there's one door. Which, which emits a light and I was like, put that stupid torch away. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one, one, two... Three doors? There's, we should go to the first door. There's two doors. The there's one. Tog goes up to one of the doors. There's another door back here. Over we here. We start from the left there's and work our way right. That's what <laughs> it's I'm nearest, thinking. nearest the entrance. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's not open too many doors at once. Yeah, okay. we'll go one at a time. Marcus, come stand by me. I'm going to. Okay. Marcus, I do. In other okay. words. Stand next to him. Okay, let me yeah. move Marcus up. That's, That's the reason I said it. That's Marcus. Um, the door is uh, locked. Similar to the amber. other amber doors, um, it requires, and like Lysandra goes, it must be unlocked. To, they all must be arcane locked to talk. So there's no light lock or anything that I can try and lock pick? Or is it magical, is it? It's like there's no lock. It's like magical. Ah, wait. One of us has a. Uh... This is beyond your understanding, Todd. Boarding Dwarma... plane three hundred five. Does, does Duama have a uh, knock? I don't know. I don't think so. I use spell knock. magic. He says I could try to knock. Just knock them. is knock is a spell that opens any door magically yeah. or. He doesn't have it. Okay. Do you I want? It would be the sort of spell he had. Do you? Does he have to spell magic up though? Uh, let me look. Uh, detect magic. I have to spell magic. I uh, think I have to spell magic to too. Magic. I do have to spell magic. For now, we're gonna just not utilize. Again, we're not gonna utilize. Uh, let's just simplify things, guys. Like Sandra and Dwarmer can't help you guys. Right. Okay. Uh, could we, uh, how hard do you think it would be to break down the door without any repercussions of the magic lock? I don't know. Do you want me to try? <laughs> well, if they're all going to be like this, we might as well try on one. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I touch and give you some guidance. I'm going to take one of my axes and try and bash down the door. Are we just going to, like, we're letting Tog, like, break down the door? <laughs> they just told me a deep. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Sure. Yeah, he's our, he's our expert lock picker. That's how he does he's it. He's our door opener. You slowly begin, like, chopping this amber door down. It's breaking off chunk by chunk, Tog. You, like, Is that she the, ru the rubble's, like, kind of... The rubble like forms around you, right? Like 
kind of into the rubble here. And um, it just takes a few swings, you know, from with your axes, your magical axe. And um, it lets off like an eerie black gas when you do it. Everyone is affected by it. Except for Lysandris and um, the two guys that aren't here. Um, you guys take 40 and necrotic damage. Oh, God. What was it? 40 so 10. There's our up. answer. <laughs> oh. What? Did you, guys see? Did you guys see? I rolled kind of low. Good. I rolled 11 Whoa, damage. Smash. 11? Yeah. What hit us? Uh, the door. God, God, the door. <laughs> Smells funky. The door is not open. Now. Um, <laughs> How much did we take, sorry? Or I eleven. Don't breathe. Eleven. Uh, eleven. I... Um. Yeah. You. You're still taking necrotic damage. We only took eleven from yeah. forty ten. The nice. the gas like wow. the 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 door like vaporizes Irina. It turns into like. Like almost like a black mist, like something has been unlocked that shouldn't be unlocked. And everybody takes 11 points of necrotic damage. But the door is now open, Sean. I'm going to healing surge, and then I have to get on a play. Okay. We'll see you later, Marcus. See you later, mate. Thanks for showing up. Yep, no problem. Thanks. Nice deep trip. Thank you. Yeah, can can I? I can heal and surge as well, can I? Can you use some of my hit dice? Is that yeah, right? You could, you could just use your hit dice if you want to. The hit dice only refresh after a long rest. Yeah, I'm gonna use some. Can you use some hit? Anybody want to do that? They can at this time. Uh, Toggle, you look into the room, and the furnishings of this bare stone room have succumbed to decrepitude. Standing in the center of the room is a head. Is a head standing in the center of the room, its head scraping in the 10 foot high ceiling, is a vaguely man shaped construct made from dark wood and riveted iron. Its helm head stares blindly in your direction. Cobwebs stretch from this terrible artifice to the wrecked furniture that surrounds it. It appears to be like some strange golem. Oh, it's, it's like inanimate. It's not moving. I thought it was the person when you were saying. Lysandris, uh, what is your god up to? Doing, leaving weird, creepy stuff in, in random places. Anyone, what the fuck is that? Maybe we should just close the door. The door has been destroyed. <laughs> There's nothing left of the door. It's little wooden splinters. Ah, uh, poke it. Amber splinters. Should I poke it? I mean, probably no. not. We've learned what happens when you poke things. What else is in the room? That's it. Unless you're going in and rolling an investigation roll. I'll give mm. you bardic inspiration. <laughs> oh, Margaret, I'm going to I'm going to stand in the door. Okay, you're going inside. The, yep. the, the, the statue of this golem is like unmoved. I'm going to kind of step to the side a couple, see if it heads move before I get too close. I mean, I just put the model out as a clay golem, but it's not really a clay golem. I'll find a better model for it. I, I can't even see. Oh, yes, I can. I just put it in there. There it is. Oh, wow. Its head is like touching the ceiling of this room. Yeah, so you can't get out the door anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a look around. Then I'm gonna have a bit uh, of investigation. If it doesn't, if its head doesn't track me when I move like side to side in the room, without getting too close, you like I'm do this a little start. bit. Yeah, and you just don't, to see if it's watching me. The eyes are like not even lit up or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna have a look around. Are, yeah, roll an investigation roll. Everybody else is standing in the hallway. Oh, come on, 
good roll for one. I did give you inspiration. <laughs> you gonna use your bardic inspiration on this zero here, Tom? Oh. Nat one. No, because it'll only give me an eight. <laughs> I rolled a zero. Oh no. Oh god. Yeah. Oh, um, there's nothing getting hit. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely nothing, Tom. You stepping out? Nothing, nothing good. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to go and investigate anything anymore. Nope. <laughs> All right, next room. <laughs> I go to the next door. Try to open it. Is it magically locked again? Yeah. Hey, right. I'm gonna stand back. Everyone, yeah. move away. <laughs> okay, you guys kind of step away from like, like over here. Tog is the only one like he's bashing on the doors. It makes quite a bit of noise. I'm gonna but, stop bashing. Sure. It takes, just takes a few swings and you break through. I'll roll up the damage. <laughs> Taking one for the team. Oh, that sounded worse. <laughs> Twenty-seven <laughs> points of necrotic damage. Twenty-seven. No, I'm still okay. Yeah, I'll open the door, and you can still use any remaining hit dice you have, right, Tom? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to yet. I... Okay. You guys see this like black mist? The same thing happens. Talk like steps forward. Um, I go out. This is like a bed chamber of some kind. The white marble bed stands in the center of this bare stone room. Its mattress long since rotted away. Golden hawks perched atop the bed's corner posts. The room's remaining furnishings have reduced to dust-covered heaps. Cobwebs cover arcane sigils carved into the walls. What do you do, Tom? Uh, 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 I walk up behind him, and I put a, hit, put my hand on his shoulder, just like, don't go investigating. And I ask for Irina to come forward and to check out the room. I see golden fins in the back corner, or... Well, I will. Uh, <laughs> How about the uh, glowy yeah, fins on the wall? And let, let me roll. I'll Irina roll. moves into the room. Investigation. Oh, so bad. Thirteen. Like the, um, it's pretty obvious from the description I just told you. Like the golden hawks that are on the the bed's mm -hmm. corner posts. They could be worth something. Like you, you see that they're made of like real gold. Do you want to take them? Do you guys want to take these golden? I'm sure Tog will definitely uh, sculptures. Be if they're shiny, Just, he'll want shiny. Them. He'll want them. All right. All right. Fantastic. Throw it in the bag. <laughs> I'm gonna take the gold. Right. <laughs> Here's kind of the description yeah, too. Is that, if that's um, they're worth quite a bit. These golden hawks, they're like probably about this size. Uh, put it on the group loot sheet as something to potentially sell later. Are we going to? Wanna. Are we going to the next room, Bob? Down here. There's another uh, room down here. Yep. I'm just putting it on the loot sheet. If you want to move me. Are we doing the same thing, breaking down the door? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> we'll be, will we be safe in this other room? <laughs> you want to wait in this room? Yeah. Well, maybe you be maybe safe. We don't know. What do you want to do, Shaq? I'll go for it, maybe. Shaq is just sitting back while Tog is looting around. Move up. Okay. Tog, uh, before, you breaking the next door? Before he starts hacking at it, I'm gonna. Cast the uh, two cure wounds on him. Okay, hey, roll up the healing. This one. You want? I'm, I'm good. Shaq is I'm gonna good. try to destroy the door in his snake form. Uh, so you get 17 points. Shaq, you're gonna move up to the door and break it down in your snake yep. form. Less tog insists. Hey, if you wanna go for it, then go for it, big man. Why don't you use your summoned one rather than you doing it? A great idea. Wow. <laughs> Look at I've, that. Tog I've already has the good idea. Shaq, if you actually hit tab, 
You can see which one I've marked as you. So you've moved yours up. I moved mine. Yeah, so I moved the right one up for you there. We so this move away and let. Yeah. <laughs> we should have done this, but that's smart oh, this, to realize. This, uh, <laughs> this um, snake took some damage, right, from the cloud kill from before. Let's roll up the He's damage. He's Yeah, let's roll up some damage. See if he disintegrates. Let's good kill him. You can summon him again. I know. 27 points of damage. You can't get me back. <laughs> there you go, Shaq. I opened the door for you. And the snake's uh, gone now? The snakes are gone. The snake is still up, but what? badly injured. Oh, okay. Yeah. After I see the cloud dissipate, I kind of saunter over to the room, have a peek. I'm not going inside, eh? Can I fit through the door? You see, like, four... A snake, yeah. Four godstones are in here. There's, um, there's, I'm sorry, there's three godstones in here. Like the ones Lysander oh attached? Yes. Not again. Ice? Is this what you were looking for? No. My god, dear. Uh, I think we should leave them. Okay. <laughs> well, I think we should at least look at what they are. Uh, it turned her into a fucking tiefling. <laughs> this room has amber glazed walls, a blue marble floor, and three amber godstones standing in alcoves. Can I look but not touch? Right. Yeah. Can we see like any inscription on them for any information about what these godstones? Uh, I can't Bri read. I'm a Brittian well, up to here. <laughs> you you do not. Tog stands back behind Brittian. <laughs> this um stone here. You see like, in the reflection of the stone, an angel. With wings. Elegant. It flies near the edge of some vast, unspeakable void. You feel a pull towards you, Brilliant, to touch it. If I see him reaching, I'm going to pull him away. Well, just so pretty, clear. pretty angel, pretty angels is is not enough for me to start touching things to make me essentially have skin melting. Okay, you want to look at the next stone over here? Um, yeah, just I guess look at each one. The stone, a beautiful goddess, appears in the reflection. It says to you, telepathically through the stone, it says, learn to fight those who oppose us. Hmm. All right. Well, there's that stone. What about the, the next stone? A beautiful woman appears in front of the stone and materializes, its reflection replacing yours. Love is what binds us together, what we live for. Whisper sweet nothings into anyone's ears and they will be yours. So after uh, hearing the, the voices, um, they just see me kind of shudder and just be like, yeah, there's nothing worth touching in here. Okay. So I think we should uh, should leave. Okay. Good enough for me. It's uh, the double doors. Is that Are we having Shaq's creature break it through again? Is it uh, locked? I was going to say if it was locked first. <laughs> yeah, we're always checking step by step. Yeah. If it's, it's magically same locked, thing. then we get the bash. All the doors are the same. 
um, in this Run temple. Away. All right. Yeah. So I think we're just going to back out of the way for it to smash it down. Snake will make one yeah. final sacrifice. Let's roll we'll the damage for the snake. Doors. Maybe I'll roll triple ones or whatever. Um, the this, this flame skulls that were in this room are gone, so the creatures inside would not come out. It's, your snake hits it, and you guys see a uh, shack's snake like dissolve into mist and vapor as the black cloud of like poisonous necrotic gas overlays it. It's destroyed, but the doors are open. And thank you for your service. <laughs> You see inside um, with the dark vision tog, three more godstones. Oh, for God's sake! Well, we might wanna have, do you want to listen to them? See what they want to give you? Hey, you know it's, it's free. It's free advertising. Let them let them talk to me. I mean, they've been waiting so patiently. Let them let them get a chance to entice. You go up to the one on the left. You see her. Adon. Oh, fuck. The goddess of spirits. You need to make a charisma saving throw as you... It's irresistible oh, for you to worst, touch that's it. That's my worst one. I'm, I'm behind him the whole time. One. You want to try All to grab right, him, Tog? Ooh, I got if a... he starts reaching, I said I was going to grapple him. Okay, we'll have Tog try to do an attack roll on Brilliant. <laughs> he's, he's actually trying to grapple. He's trying to touch. Yeah, so you have to make an attack I, roll, right? Did I fail my charisma? Well, let, let, let's let go back first. Let's go to Toggle. So Bridian and it's Toggle just, need to make a grapple check. Which means so that you use... Strength or an attack roll. You use your strength, Toggle. Bridian can use um, acrobatics or athletics. Do I just use whichever one's higher? Like That's logically? right. Okay. All right. I got a. Oh no! I have a so you failed the grapple. No. Bridian shrugs you off, Toggle, as he like touches the stone as he sees his guys <laughs> and the reflection My hands stone slip off his armor and the shield. All oh, the pictures yeah. of the goddesses are on the website. Her, she looks like her hair is jet black. She floats near like a stone altar in this in the ethereal plane things are black and white you resist the charisma saving throw um to have your character altered oh good but you gain an ability my servant it's taking you so long to find me the power of death will give you command over it. I will link you the ability that you gain. Okay. But to be clear, I'm not going to change into anything because I... You don't know yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> but okay. I can assume that. Maybe. Go, 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 go. <laughs> you can touch it into a drain eye. <laughs> oh, my God. Touching the stones have... I whispered you the ability. <clears throat> I go, Brilliant! You weren't supposed to touch the fucking fin. Well, that's just rotten luck. I guess. There's two more stones in here, Brilliant. What do you do? Uh, you know, I think after dealing with that, I think it's like, you know what? Maybe, maybe it wasn't such a good idea looking at all these stones. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the room. Not on it, the other ones. Okay. What are you guys doing? We're leaving the room. Yeah. Okay. I can't read, so I ain't got clues on them. Well, there's no, there's no writing on the top. The reflections oh. appear out of the stone, and they appear for the person standing in front of them and speak to you telepathically. I want to see what it says. Okay. I don't want to touch it. Irina well, goes I up to, want to touch it either. For this one here. Yeah, it was your, but it was your god though too. I guess that's true. You see, like a man, he, he stands like on a beach, 
rain pours all around him. A flash of lightning. You almost hear the thunder booming in the distance. Taco, are you trying to stay close so nobody touches it? Are you trying to like guard feed people from touching the stones? Yeah. <laughs> I was just <laughs> telling point I was there. <laughs> okay. Well, you're right behind Irina. That's it, Irina. Hmm. These are interesting. But I don't think I want to touch one. There's another <laughs> one if you want to look at that one too. Wait, so look at the last one. Yeah. Wait, why, why are we testing fate here? <laughs> we got lucky. <laughs> yeah. A woman covered in plague and poxes. Whew, that one's not 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 very pretty. Let's uh see if Lysanthus knows what else we need to do here. We haven't found my uh, my patron's stone yet. Well, we haven't looked upstairs. Let's go upstairs. <clears throat> we have a hallway. Okay, everybody's like following Tog. Didn't we go down through that secret room to get to her stones? I'm assuming that's not going to be the same stone she's already touched, is it? <clears throat> Where are we going? I don't know. Upstairs, I think. Okay. Because that's the only place we haven't gone in this. Just tell me where you want to go upstairs. So you guys, let me switch back to the map. You went upstairs, you searched the one side room where the, the three Cavani right. commoners were. No, 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 the opposite, opposite end. Where the where pit. I Where I run to. Sure, there's like a pit over there. You know, like a Yeah, pit. that was going down into that room, wasn't it? Um, we were just in. Yeah, exactly. You saw the opening in the ceiling there. Um, so the, the, this temple has been worn down a lot. You guys want me to put you in the hallway? Yeah, so, because we're walking up the stairs, right? Yeah, I mean, put you guys up there. Yeah. And then look at it to this room. I kind of help myself out here. Oh. I kind of move everybody up here. Moving between floors can be a little challenging. Shaq, you like snip, slither a claw across up is the it, stairway. Is a snake, anything he can get his head in, he's good. Okay, so you're you see this hallway? Let me describe it to you. Glazed amber covers the walls of this twenty foot wide, seventy foot long arched corridor. The amber do doors at both ends of the hall stand open. So there's like a there's like a there's a uh, a uh, door that's open over here, Tog. The very end of the hallway. Okay. And the, you're walking through doors that are already open. You see that? Right here? Mm-hmm. And a closed door is in the middle of the east wall. So there's a door right over here. I'm heading towards it. And then there's like arrow slits, you know, leading out to the main chamber. So this is like where you could have went if you didn't fail the stealth roll. Yep. Before. Okay, so are, remind me. are we going going through this room here on the right? We're working our way along. You see, the you, see the, you see the door right there? Oh, yeah, you said yep. they're all like that. Yep, they're all Is like it? that. Okay. Uh, are we breaking so it open? I tell everyone to stand back. Okay, everybody stands now back. Now, now the snack's gone. Okay, let's roll up the damage. Roll As you're like, you're, hold on here for one second. As you're kind of banging on the door, yeah, I'm trying to think. You're banging on the door, I'll rope the damage. Would this spell magic work? Tog's already doing it, but yes, it would work. <laughs> Everyone's oh. been telling me to bash doors, so I've just been bashing doors. 17 necrotic to... damage as the do door disintegrates. We wouldn't be in a Dungeons and Dragons game if doors and chests and things aren't getting smashed. All right. How so, much damage, sorry? Uh, 17. Did you see the roll? Okay. 
Send to default, everyone. Um, so there you go, Tog. Take 17 points of necrotic damage. And it, it looks like um, a giant, like... Um, let's take a look at what is this called exactly. It's like an oil. It's like a lecture hall. This chamber yeah. is brightly lit by red copper lantern, lanterns that hang one foot from the ceiling. The walls are sheathed in amber that has been shaped into bas reliefs of wizards with spell books. Stairs to the north and south descend 20 feet to an obsidian lectern, behind which slabs of black slate hangs from chains. Between the stairs are descending rows of marble red benches. So do you see the benches in front of you? Yeah. And yeah. um doesn't look any like anything's in it. <laughs> a woman Just wizardy shit. <laughs> a woman kind of sees you as you're kinda like joking about a little bit in here. She like was hiding Wait. because she was hearing Wait, a you. Woman? Yeah. Oh, okay. She was like hearing you. And there's also like a skeleton of a man over here. Skeleton. You said it was kind. brightly lit in there. Is there any chance you can up the? Uh, I'm gonna try so we can up. actually see. Let me see if there's an environmental effect in here. There's not. So the whoever created it, this. Let me. If you want me to, I can go in there and try. Did we lose you, That's Irina? Fine. Yeah, I'm logging back on. It just like I'll link you out. with this picture. Of it, the picture of the woman. It's just really hard for me to actually see. Um, it's meant to be that way, talk. <laughs> yeah, I thought that you said this room was brightly lit. Eh? That's all. I have to unlock the character. A beautiful elven woman comes out. Ah, another yeah. elf. There you go. I linked it in. Oh. Lights. <laughs> Or cleric. Yeah, you were stuck in it. Yes, yeah, so I found this traveler. We found our way here. What do you How'd say? you get past? How'd you get past the fox fin and get into a room that was locked? That's a bit confusing. Stealth. Being very careful. That's all it takes. <laughs> Not she bashing down doors. <laughs> How did you get through the door that was magically locked, though? I had a fucking exit. A question. Poor dwarves. Always so crude in the magical arts and bendings of Zen. Oh, stubborn fucking elves always uppity and never know what. To... Oh, I'm just walking away. <laughs> I just walk away. <laughs> Muttering to myself about stupid elves. Okay, so Lysa's is in here, so I'm going to move Lysa in here. So I have to kind of role play between two different people, like, right? It says her mom, right? Mother, is that you? <laughs> She's a tiefling. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a d20 for her and see if we she accepts the fact that her daughter has been transformed. If I roll a 10 or higher, she believes that her daughter is a, what are you, you monster? Don't you understand? It's me, your daughter. What are you doing here? <laughs> Don't understand. I need to get out of here. Can you guys take me back to the entrance? If she looks over at Beridian. The uh, the elf asked me that. Yeah, because you're in the room still with her. Everybody else right. is in the hallway. Um, sure. But uh. You notice she has like a necklace on her. The necklace is unusual. Um, what is uh, that's not your that jewelry that you'd normally wear, Mother? Be quiet, demon.
lead me out of here, Flarek. Uh, I said that we could. Does not mean that we would. We still have great main questions for why you are here. As a noble of the house of Ilsoral, I demand you escort me out of this temple immediately. Well, unfortunately, I don't know any noble houses of elves, so <laughs> that power. You just say it. You just say it. Togo will just go. This is a noble of the house of elves. <laughs> <laughs> The magics in here are beyond your understand your mortal's understanding. This place and is a bit too of politeness is under your understanding, obviously. But this place is too dangerous. I suggest we all leave. Well, we've already killed everything, so I doubt that. Well yeah, that's actually true. We haven't actually killed you yet. I do not respond well to threats, dwarves. How rude. I wasn't threatening. I'm just stating a fact. We haven't killed everything. What do you guys do? Dwarma says, we're hobos. <laughs> I'm going to assume, oh. Shaq, um, the time or whatever that we've been in here searching and everything like that, you've now reverted back to your form. Do you want to shape shift back into a snake? Or shall we go back into Shaq form? I'll, I'll be Shaq for now. Okay, let me hide this model. Let me go so, try. again, I'm pretty good with locks and opening stuff. How did you get in here? For it to still be locked after you're in here. It doesn't make any sense to me. You trying to get like an insight roll on her? Yeah, she's lying, obviously. Yeah. Roll an insight roll. Um, Irina can roll too. Irina says, "Yeah, she like wants to roll with advantage or something." There you are, Shaq. Roll with advantage, Irina. Yeah, let's have Irina roll with advantage on the insight roll. Oh, not 20. Wow, nice. Plus four. 24. Kicking butt with the Archmage dice. Archmage's favorites, man. I like <laughs> those dice. Um, this woman appears to be, like, rattled. She's thin, thinned out. Who knows how long she's been in here. Just, like, hiding in this room or whatever. Um, she looks distraught. But she appears to be telling the truth. Her hidden, her intentions are not unhidden, and she does want to leave. What well, do you guys do? This is Lysa's mom. We should definitely make sure she's taken care of. Well, was there how anything? Do you, how do you know my room? daughter's name? He's right there. This filthy demon. Your, your daughter. She touched one of them weird stones and it turned her into this. Yep. Well, if you will not lead me back, I will just follow you. Okay. Until you decide you to leave. A, uh, professional door lock unlocker. Right? Yeah. You can unlock doors. Can you maybe unlock this door down the other end for us as well? <sighs> I'm going to get... I'm going to go in the room and start looking around. Like, now she's staying back. Or she's Ready, and you want to search the room? You see Tog starting to dip down. He's yeah, like I'm looking under the tables. I'm looking as well. Okay, why don't you I roll with advantage there, guys? Let's have Ready. Show her my talisman that Lice gave me. To see sure. If has any you kind of walk up to her. her. Yeah. You walk up to Danaxia Moonbreeze. And, um,. She's like, what is this demonic and scribblings on your chest? Okay, never mind. I'll have her make a religion roll. Let's roll d20 for her. She doesn't quite put it together. Okay. I'd like to take a look at this body down here. 
Sure. What did you roll on the investigation roll? 12. Just straight up 12? Yeah, okay. that's with advantage. You guys don't find anything beyond what I've described in the room, but this appears to be like a dead body of somebody. Um, of like, it looks to be like, he's not dressed in the same like black robes or whatever. The robes were of the wizards of this temple that you've seen in the inscriptions of on the entrance way in. Um, so it appears to be like another traveler or something of some kind. It's a human. He must be Barovin, maybe. Um, he has no possessions on him. He wears like sandals and a robe. Okay. This must be like some type of lecture hall for the wizards, right? I think I need to get summoned back to the board. Sure. Please. Yep, there you go, Irina. Thanks. What do you guys want to do? We have no reason not to trust her. So, let's go. Yeah, and if we investigate the room and there's appears to be nothing else, then I say we uh, move on. This was kind of supposed to be a moment for Lysandris, but she's not here. So, we'll just follow yeah. her and maybe she's here yeah, next much. Maybe she's Which, here next week and we can continue with this storyline. But for now, yeah. Lysandra's mother will follow you. It's like, just don't even a ignore. reunion. That's like, oh, some other backstory. Um, cool. So I say, as we're walking out towards the next room, I go to the woman. I go, that's a very shiny necklace, by the way. It's not property for you, dwarf. Nor would you understand its divine purpose. Oh, but you can tell us if it has a divine purpose. My mate Beridian might might enjoy it. He's a man of God. Oh, we, so we're walking down here, like into the hallway, guys, and you're yep. kind of like chatting down. So I'm, this is the marching order. I'm to describe what you see, like looking through into the hallway. The walls and ceiling of this eastern portion of this bare stone room have collapsed to so the west and south were open amber doors. In the center of the room is a 10-foot high tall statue of a jackal-headed warrior made of cracked amber. It turns to face you with its awesome. vicious with its fists clenched. We roll initiative. Yeah, so let me pull it out. This is where the starting order is. Let me reveal the creature. Boom, there it is. Irene has moved a little bit too far, so we'll put her up front, though, being brave. She's kind of walked into the room. <laughs> Um, let's roll, let me pull up the encounter and we'll roll up the initiative. See where you guys are all kind of caught out, actually. It makes two slam attacks to Irina. Attack number one. That's to self, so let me change the default there so we can actually see the attack. So it defaults to self when I load up the encounter, which is kind of annoying from D&D Beyond. Here we go with attack number one with a plus 10, 17. What's your AC? Plus 10. 19. So it didn't hit you. Attack number two. 28. That definitely hit. 3d8 plus 6 damage. 30 damage. What's your total HP at? What's your max HP? 51. So you take more than half damage in one attack. Roll a DC 15 con save or take a stack of exhaustion from a massive damage hit. It's our house rule that we've been kind of neglecting. Oh, 10. So you fail. You take a stack of exhaustion. The, the fist bursts and hits your femur as gouts of blood begin to fly out. I'm going to go down the initiative count. Let's start it. Let's go. It's Irina. Irina, you're up. Then Viridian's on deck. Can I use my Staff of Frost and do with the like, wall of ice on him? You're right next to him. You're just like kind of like listening and so talking and like you close. walk in the room like... Yeah, I mean, you guys kind of got caught off here. You're just moving ahead. Okay. Uh... I mean, you could... Yeah, it wouldn't work, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to... Go you into want... my starry archer form. Okay, that's a bonus action. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else do you want to do? And, um, 
I want to. I, I kind of choose Baldus, just having him like magically appear in front of you, but it is what it um, is. Um, I, I want to hold hold my action, and then I want to, but I want to move back and disengage, even though it'll be. Well, actually, no. Wait. You want to take your action and dodge, and then move away, or I'm sorry, you want to take your action as disengage, so it won't get an attack of opportunity. Yes. You want to move back to like there. Yes. Okay, that does, works. Does she have the action disengage? Yeah, everyone does talk. Brilliant's up. All right. Uh, um, I am going to. Shorty use the bones. Um, it's just her action. Talk. Oh, I thought we it, it negated bonus actions as well. If it's you, an it ability. Takes a, nope, oh, she's right. good. Uh, Brilliant, you're up. Yep, yeah, uh, I'm going to. Um... There's treasure and things to be had here, Brilliant. There's also more <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to use a bonus action to create the spiritual weapon uh, next to it. Okay. Want to create the spiritual and, weapon? Yeah, and uh, it is Boom. going to... We'll put it right there. Attack. Um, I'll kind of... You want it, like, right here, in fr like, standing in front of it? Uh, yeah, just a little off to the side to still, like, hit it, but, like... Right. If, put it right there. You know, Okay. Yeah, just like, just That's your bonus like, action. We'll hit on it. Yep. Yeah, so AC of seventeen. That one, one so automatic nine. miss. What do you want to do as your uh, action? Yep, yeah, I'm going to do my Cantrip. sacred flame. Uh, uh, Dex sixteen. That's for you. Slow. This creature is pretty slow. I wish I could have like a better um, world in at twenty. Past, but it's still a 19. There's no critical success for saving throws. But it's pretty cool with the sound effect. Is your turn over, Brutian, or you want to make a move action? That, um, a move action? Want to kind of move down the hallway a little bit? Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm not in range, I guess I'll move back a little okay, bit. Yeah, there you go. Let's move you. you I mean, you yeah, can move I'll pretty do, far. I'll move, I'm just going to move pretty short. Let me just figure out who that. I'm just going to move to about right, right there. Okay. Next person up is Shaq. No, oh, it's me. I have Shaq up next, rolled, and then you're up. I rolled a four, he rolled a three. True. Okay, sorry, I must have entered it in wrong. Just let's just do it. It's not a big deal. You're reversing one opponent. We'll have Shaq go first. Just because yeah, it's in my little program with the initiative count. Thanks. Summon a snake Action. behind him. What do you want to do? Summon a snake behind him. Okay. If possible. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, a giant snake won't fit behind him. You see there's like a bunch of rubble or whatever, I think, in this room. Like, he's standing up against a wall. There's like rubble up here to the left of him, like a collapsed cavern. Like, you could probably stick the snake like right in front of him. Because, hmm. I mean, it's a giant-ass snake, right? It's as big as he is. Will nothing fit behind him? No, you can't flank him. In that way. Unfortunately, it's just like tactically. The low light, like the ramblings of like this woman that you just encountered, just caught you off all off guard. You guys have dropped your guard. <laughs> I don't want to block the whole hallway, but you gonna just say fuck it, Shaq? I'm, I'm just I'm going to block the whole hallway. You know, you'll, you'll load this a little bit. You want to put the dude down here? I can just hop on your back and start quacking away. We gotta we gotta bump sure. him up a notch. So we gotta bunch him up. To, this is what he looks like. Boom, right in front of it. Oh my god. Okay, but that's what it looks like. I can try to move him a little closer like that. So now the weapon is in there too. That's about as much as I can fit in that room, really. Shaq, weapon that was your action. Fly. That was your action, Shaq. What do you else do you want to do? And like the snake like forms out of the mist in the ether. The giant snake hisses at him. I think the snake can attack on your turn, right? I, think, I hope so. Well, actually, how it technically works is we roll initiative. So um, we'll say it goes on your turn, Shaq. That's fine. Cool. So roll a snake. Roll right. an attack with a snake. Has an AC of 17. Yeah, that's... Big old flex. It materializes, but everybody's a little off guard. 
Okay, Shaq, as you turn over, you just want to stand there. You want to move back? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just standing there. You're just gonna stand in the do doorway. Tog, you're up. Back. Okay, move back. Can I get past the snake? No, no, you can't. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, in that case, then I'm gonna turn, uh, move back down the hallway to where the woman is that we just found in the room. Yeah, she's in, way assume, in the back. I'm assuming she's a little bit freaked out by the big golem and the snake just appearing. She's like, I told you, dwarf, you clumsy idiot. What are you telling me? She's staring at me. She, you've I, I walked up to her. her. Wait, I was talking to her as we were walking through. She does not. She's not going to walk in first to some room. No, but I was talking to her. Yeah, when, through the so hallway. She would, have been, she would have been beside me is what I'm saying. Okay, well, you're standing when beside. So you, down. I'll allow it so you don't make a move action. I put the models out. Yep. This is what it looks in that like. Case, then, she looks back and she... sees a giant snake. She says, I told you, you idiots. Okay, I'm going to steal her necklace while she's concentrating on that. She's like looking and you're like right in front of her. You have to make like a sleight of hand check. The DC's 20. You could do it. Like I can do it. I yeah, you're a pretty it. skilled dwarf. Let's see. Oh, damn it. You can't she's like, hands it. off, dwarf. You filthy thief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the end of your turn. Cute. I like it. Uh, we're going to skip uh, Dwarma Lysandrus. The stone golem is up. It's going to just bash its way through the uh, the summon construct. Attack number one. It'll try. It's going to try its damn best. 24. I don't roll so badly. Crunch. Crunch. Uh, 21 damage on the first snake attack. That's a snake. The second one's up. I rolled a, what's the AC of the snake? It's pretty low. 12. I hit it. Throw up the second pair of damage. 19. So 21 plus 19. Uh, 40 points of damage on the snake. Is it disappeared? Nope. Okay, it's still up. How is it? It's just badly injured. It's bloodied. Okay, Arena's up. Um, I am going to cast Cure Wounds on myself because I am very bloodied. Okay. Or you can use your hit dice, Irene. It's a healing surge action, so you don't have to waste the spell. But you already rolled the dice, so... I'm looking at my sound effects board to see if I can find like a slam effect. It's one of these new things I found. I can't find it though. The guy doesn't have a slam effect. Anymore. And that's it. Okay, Great. let's go down the line. I think Brydian's up. Yep, Brydian's up. So. Shack on deck. Uh, so spiritual weapon's going to attack. Yeah, it's just enable there to uh, swing. Uh, that's 21. a hit. One. Yeah. All right, so it's going to be ten. Hit, hit points of damage and then I'm going to uh, cast Sacred it takes half damage from that attack sorry. okay well well, it's, it's force damage if that makes any yeah well, that, that counts so yeah we'll mark 10 damage down okay Okay. and then yeah I'm going to do um, Sacred Flame on it so deck 16 okay Didn't roll. I didn't roll nat 20 that time. Let's roll the damage up. All right. Oh, wait. It has advantage on saving throws. Okay, so I rolled another 8. How much damage? 7? Uh, 12. Okay. Nice. All right. Shack's up. Want to attack with the snake? Thanks. Going to attack... That should hit. 13 plus 6. Yeah, it's 13. a hit. I'll roll the strength saving throw. See if it breaks out of your thing. It does beat the DC of 13, I think, right? Being grappled 16. and restrained. 16? So I rolled a 14. Is that right? Is it DC 16? So it's grappled and restrained. Yeah, so that should be a 13 plus 4 to 17 damage. Yeah, let's mark it down. <laughs> nice. What do you want to do? Uh, anything else, Shaq? Can, can I hit him with a moonbeam from here? Um, now that you're scrappled with the snake, the, the snake will be hit by the moonbeam as well. But yes, it will be hit by the moonbeam. Do you want to do that? Are you done? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he's Toggles just up. On. Is there anything to... around... She's like... around on the floor? That I can throw. There's like a boulder. Like, you see that's rock debris on the model here? There's like some rocks and stuff. 
How heavy does she look? <laughs> it's pretty oh light. You can try to grab her or something. Oh, no. I know, I know, I know. Uh, uh, come back. Yeah, he threw your mom. She just takes a dog. step away from you now, Todd, like down the hall. And she's like, how rude. Dwarma's in the back here. Same with Marcus. You know, that was Marcus shiny. Is. Couldn't help myself. Uh, Filthy I my time. Okay. I end, I end my turn. The I can't up. get to the bastard. The golem uh, takes disadvantage on attacks against the thing. Is it? I'll make the first attack and then we'll try to maybe roll a strength check on the next one. Let me roll a disadvantage. Try to break the grapple first. Oh, that's an action though to do that. Mm -hmm. So just rolled a disadvantage. So I rolled a twelve. That's a hit on the snake. Let's roll the damage up. Snake takes another twenty-five points of damage. Snake done. He's gone. So he's no longer grappled. Um, let's delete the snake. He fought well. Poor snake. <laughs> Rip. Um, the amber golem marches down the hallway. You get a. It's still within the sphere of attack. It runs up to Beridian and hits him with a slam attack. 16. You're rolling pretty low, guys. Didn't hit. All right. Okay. That's it for my turn. Irina's up. Uh, I'm going to move back. Uh, let me see the reach of the creature. Right here. Let me see the reach. Reaches five feet, it doesn't hit you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move back. Okay. And I am going to shoot my arrow at it. Yeah, in your new form, sure. Yes. One attack. AC of 17. That's a hit, nice. 18. In your new starry twilight form, you pull back this bowstring of light. Plus from the goddess Four of nine damage. <laughs> Kicking butt. Little by little. The golem is still pretty strong. It's not like regenerating or anything, but it's just... It appears to be like it hasn't been damaged, or maybe it's been been, been maintained by something. Bridian's up, right? That was just your bonus action, Irina. Do you want to do another action? Like, it's bardic inspiration or something? Yeah, I can give Bardic inspiration to like Birdie and her shack. Like Birdie and her shack. Boggles on combat right now. Yeah, um, it hasn't been have ten minutes yet. Inspiration. Mm. Um, let's so give it to uh, let's give it to like yeah. Birdie because he's right up. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, just in case he needs it or something. Now there's an optional rule, Irina, where you can use. I think your reaction or something like cutting words and things like that. You can use your bardic inspiration tokens to reduce saving throws of creatures, the attack rolls of creatures, and damage or something like that as well. Something you should look into. I don't know all the rules offhand, but it's something I did look over a little bit. Um, let's go to the next person in the initiative count. Nice job, Irina. That Shaq. You see your uh, the golem has moved up and angrily as it stomps heavily through the the smashed hallway, essentially. How, the how big is the saber tooth tiger? I don't. There's no tiger model in the. We'll have to improvise. I don't know what but what is uh, if, when you pull up the stat block of the creature. It should tell you whether it's. It's a large. Yeah, it's so large. It's, yeah, so it's I'm going to pull up. It's not huge where it's like boom. Yeah. Right. But large is ten by ten. Same size as a snake. Giant it's the same snake. size as this guy too. You want to pull him up? He could fit in the hallway. He could fit right here. But Toggle couldn't get in then. We want Toggle to get in some action. I do. I do. You want to just wait nah, a little go bit? For it. Do what you want to do, mate. Want to summon another creature? Yeah. What are we summoning? Well, I could do a, a tiger, a, me a medium size, like a, a black bear, right? Oh, he's moved towards us. You should be able to get him behind him now. Yeah, you can get him behind. Him. You can summon it behind. There's a bear right there. That's a medium-sized bear right there. Yeah. Can I put someone behind him? Yeah. You get a flanking bonus, plus two. Nice. Put a little torch on your bear so we can kind of see what's going on. I There's your bear. Another one. Do you want another one? Yeah. Nice. If you can fit. 
Yeah, let's put him in there. Now the we Operidian's weapon can't get in, though. Well, his, uh, his weapon can fly. Yeah, his yeah, weapon can fly through the 10-foot doorway. Model. We'll turn it into a flying model, Operidian. Boom, okay, like that. I, I don't know how to do that. I already did it. I do it as the GM for you. There's the bears. Let's attack with the bear shack. Great. AC of 17. The weapon's actually incorporeal as well, so it can move through walls. Nice. Yeah, it's just like the spirit thing. Let me shrink it down there, Operidian, like that. Oh, there it is. We can kind of just theater the mind a little bit, but if it's if you want to be yeah, super technical, fine. I think I can move it like right there, and, like yeah, float it up. That's big what big it kind of looks like, Viridian, like that, flying above Shaq's creature. That's pretty cool. Um, the first one's a hit, right, Shaq? Yeah. One, one damage plus what? Plus four, which is five. Nice, five damage. Oh, it takes half damage from that attack. So two. It has a multi attack. Yep, roll up the next one. Even though the, I'm, I'm assuming the creature, like Brian's weapon is considered a magical weapon when summoned, but your creatures are not. Okay. Their attacks are not considered magical. That should D and D is pretty uh, terrible about that type of stuff, defining like what is magical and what's not magical. That whole rule system needs to be refined a lot. How much damage is that? Eight. Eight plus four. Well, plus twelve. So six. Okay, it's getting damaged. It it's not bloody it though. If it's, it tells you if it's magical. Eh? Uh, My it's, spiritual weapon says it's force damage. Yeah. Another nine points of damage. So four. Okay. The bears are slashed into a shack. Great. Are you done? I'm going to be a bear myself, too. Okay, we're shape-shifting into a bear? Yeah. Okay. Just another, it's kind of like, not a large bear, just like this type of bear? Yeah. Well, okay, nice. mark it on this sheet, because you haven't taken a short rest yet. Yeah, that's my last one. Okay, cool. Here we go. Boom. Until you take a short rest. Um, Toggle, you're up. Hey! All right. I finish looking on the floor, turn around, see big snakes gone. Uh, go, eh, look at it. See, I kill everything. And I'm gonna rage and charge at the big guy. How crude. <laughs> Rolled up. That's my last rage. Nice. Is that a short or uh, long rest thing? I think it's long rest, right? Long rest to get rage back. Gonna use the last one, Todd. They're precious. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, here Using we go. It. Do I do I get um We going reckless? I get flanking, don't I? You get plus two. I get plus two. I'm yeah. just gonna attack normally. Okay. Cause I'm I i get still get my sneak attack because people are next to me. That's right. Ooh, Nat 20. Woo, critical. Mm. Alright, everything's on this, so this is my sneak attack and everything. So how many how does Hold this up. work? Just, uh, first of all, roll another d20. I'm See, we get a super crawl. Our house rule. Come on, just for once. I rolled ones all night. Oh, not, no. not today. Um, all right, so the damage would be... Roll, roll the, the damage normally with the modifier, and then we'll add it together. Damage normally would be 11, 18 damage. So mark 18. And then we take max rolls without any modifiers. So you rolled a D6, right? Yeah, uh, D6 and a D, D, 2 D6, that's 3 D6, that's so another 18, 18 damage. So I'll mark the 18 down, nice job. 87, yeah. it's bloodied. That's my first attack. Yes, it is, Tog. You're not Second frenzied, attack. so you get three attacks. Not frenzied, no. 21 yeah. to hit. That's right, 17 AC. Is this with a non-magical weapon? No, still magical. Okay. Uh, that's another nine points of damage. Nice. And then non-magical last attack. So that'd be half damage. 23 to hit. Yeah, rolling well. So it's... Four. Uh, n not quite. It's four from that, but then Plus rage still damage. two from my rage. So that's five. Five damage. Plus one, four. So four... Plus one, yep. 
Okay, creature's up. My turn. I mean, I brought, the creature seems to be pretty durable. It's gone a few rounds with you guys since you've had a few adventurers drop out. We're going to do a slow effect on everybody. It's going to hit the bears, the weapon. It's going to hit everybody here. It's going to hit well, everybody. Well, uh, real quick, it kind of kind of skipped over me. Is all right if I do my turn? Did I? Yeah, yeah you did, actually. Yeah. I did? I skipped over you and went straight to Shaq? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead, Bri. All right, so the spiritual weapon's going to... That's uh, a 24. hit. Yeah, you guys have been rolling well. Then Smashing into it. Nine. And then... What are you yeah, doing? I'm just going, then I'm going to do the, another Sacred Flame. So it's another cantrip? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a pretty low deck save. It makes yeah. advantage with the deck save. It didn't pass. Cool. And then... That'll be 13. Nice. It's getting damaged kind of now a little bit. Um, it's going to just start attacking whaling on you. So let's start off the whale on uh, Brydian. Attack number one. We'll see where it goes. 23. That hits. Uh, you take 30 points of damage. You said 30? Yeah. Okay. What's your max HP? It does not go into effect. Okay. You have over 60 HP and max? Yeah. Nice. Are you bloodied? Yeah. I think so. Any concentration spells up? No? Nope. Let's see what it's going to do. It's going to attack you. Let's look at the, the creature's not that intelligent. Toggle stepped away, so I'm going to attack you again. <laughs> I rolled a nat one. doesn't matter. Irene is up. Um, it's getting pretty damaged. It's well bloody. I want to... You're in your starry form. You get Bardic Inspiration to Viridian. What do you want to do? I'm going to shoot Guiding Bolt at it. Okay. Nice, that's a hit. Dirty 20. Nice, and it doesn't, since it's not making a saving throw. This is... Yeah, you guys are using the magic, I like that. Wow, I rolled bad on that, but 17 damage. Yeah, it's not too good. But it's still better than nothing. It's pretty getting damaged, yeah. guys. Do you want to shoot with... So that was your action as your cast. Now you can shoot with your bow. Why don't you shoot with your bow, right? As your bonus action. It's pretty cool. The story archer. Yeah. See how it works, Irina? How like you have like a lot of bonus action features. Mm -hmm. So that, I did not hit with that. Yeah, it's pretty low roll. Okay, yeah, so let's go, <laughs> and then you could still make a move action too, which is kind of nice. Bridian's up. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Um, then Shaq and Tog. So going to use that spiritual weapon to to smack it. Okay. Uh, Twenty. Okay, rolling well. And then. That'll be 12 points of damage. Yep. And then I'm going to... Whack, whack, whack. <laughs> yeah, let's see. You also get a plus two to hit because you're flanking it. What else you want to uh, do? So that was your bonus action. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. If, if I cast Vampiric Touch, can I use it this round? Yeah, that's what it is. It's so, uh, a okay. melee attack. Yeah. So yeah. Like a melee so attack. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use Van Vampiric Touch. Uh, 12. So um, I guess I'll use that bar. bar yeah. Roll it up. Bardic Inspiration. Uh, what's that one? You roll a D8. D8. So you got to roll a 5 or higher. 7. Nice. nice. You got it. All right. And now where to go? I lost the track of the spell. All right. So now three to six. All right. That'll, be, games. that'll be 10. Nice. Right. And you heal 10, didn't you? Yeah. Or oh. half the amount. So I get five, five back. Yeah. You guys and see uh, Brilliant kind of cast some it. evil magic. <laughs> yeah. How do you do it, Brilliant? How do you try to suck the life out of this golem creature? Uh, well, I guess, uh, since he's a big meaty boy, I just, uh, uh the pile of stone, but maybe it has a spirit or something in there you're trying to draw. 
Uh, yeah, I just uh, reach out and. Uh, what do you say? And I say, um, <laughs> um, Adon requires me to siphon your life from my own. <laughs> okay. It's pretty badly injured, so. guys. Shaq, you're up. I think Shaq's going to finish it off. We just got to. You just start with the bears. You just start with the bears off. That's eight plus. That's a miss. I'm seeing professors saying a few things, but he's just saying how they're hobos or something. <laughs> professors in a hobo talk. It. As an AC of 17, Shaq. 12 plus, yeah, it's 18. Mm -hmm. Roll it up, Shaq. The 2d6. Nice, as these bear claws are going ham on it. Plus you get another plus two to the attack, right? Three damage. 11, 11 so five. You gonna finish it off, Jack? Come on. Let's see what this other bear is gonna do. Nine plus six plus Didn't. two, which is 17. That's a hit, because of flank. You guys are surrounding this golem. That's eight plus four. 12. Yeah, I should have did its other ability, but that's okay. 8 plus 4? Yes. Yeah. So you got how much damage did you do on that last attack there, Shaq? That was 12 on that last one. Okay. It's one last attack here, Shaq. You're going to finish it off. Don't roll this low. Is... <laughs> As this golem is being scrapped and scraped, it begins to fall it's down and disintegrate. Yeah, you, how do you destroy it, Shaq? You just, it just like topples the, the forward. Yeah. As the, all you see is just like the bears standing behind him. Let me see if we have a bear roar effect. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I'll play it again for you. Well done. Pretty cool. Yeah, you guys finish it off. Here's a good boo boo. <laughs> Don't think that monster thought he'd run into bears. You people do. Certain. <laughs> Moment of surprise. I didn't know you guys harbored thieves. What? The woman says. The Naxio says. Who are you talking about? The filthy dwarf. He tried to swipe. My necklace. Tog. Ah, I don't like her. <laughs> In the middle of a fight. Well, I can get to him. <laughs> hey, you are ain't covered, big man. Uh, at least these dwarves are good for something, destroying these golems. I'd like and to apologize has... on his behalf. Don't apologize to her. She's a scumbag elf as I'm walking through to see over the rubble and into the next room. <laughs> she's our friend's mom. At least she one of her yeah. some respect. Yeah, but she's also called her a demon, so. Eh. She'll come around. That's some karma for you. <laughs> Thank you, Archdruid. <laughs> Let's uh, tell you what's in this room here. The walls and ceiling in this eastern portion of this. I already described this room to you. Do you want to search the room? Uh, yeah, Brodian does. Yeah, okay, Brodian. I'm going in. I'm helping him. Hey, what's that? What's that? So it's That's, here, what's right? that? Are you talking about this room right it's here? It's also delete no, the room. The, or just room. the room we were in. The spiritual weapon oh, is now yeah. gone. The bears are still out. The shack. Moving guys up there. Make an investigation roll with advantage of Brodian. That trying to man. Nice. Nothing in this room. There's like a doorway <laughs> out. <laughs> Nothing unusual in the room I'll be on my description, but you never know. There's like, but you're looking around, like not moving ahead. Like you can see, like you're kind of on the upper floor of the room. This area, you see like Tog, you see like tactically, like this is like, you know, some railings are across the wall here that led to the stone that way out. You know, That's you where I wanted to get to to jump the statue yeah yeah you totally could have tried to do something like that unfortunately you just got spotted the doorway there's a doorway here but there it's open to another room um i'll describe what you see out there 
It's called the Northeast Balcony. The balcony is mar a marble balcony 30 feet above the floor, hanging um, overhangs the northeast corner of the temple. The two amber doors leading from this balcony stand open. Um, Brittian, let me kind of talk a little bit about passive perception. So how passive perception works, now obviously like when you see something, like that's kind of how it works, but investigation is like you're searching the room, right? Passive perception only works if you're within five feet of like something to notice it. Okay. That's kind of how I've read it in big. other things. Yeah. If, if some guy's trying to sneak up on you too, that's another thing too. Like again, I roll stealth check versus your passive perception. But to notice like something in the walls or something like that, you know, it's up to interpretation. In a dungeon or like here in Ravenloft, we got to do some rolls and you have to tell me if you're rolling kind of. That's kind of how I like to do it. Instead of just saying like, oh, you got an auto roll. So you want to spend some time like searching something, you know. Right. What are we going? Are we going into this room over here, guys? That's open. Yep. Uh, We're yeah. going to keep heading through as a group. Me leading okay. the way. The door's open, so I don't have to take damage. Irina, why aren't you moving up front? Yep, I'm, I'm just going to stay back here. <laughs> After getting I pummeled think. by the the, 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 the guy <laughs> once? Has it just magically yeah. appeared in front of you? Yeah. There's like I'm a... totally good. <laughs> <laughs> as you take a stack of exhaustion, right? Um, <laughs> this appears to be like a, a shrine of some kind in this room you hear, Tog. Um, the shrine is like in ruins here. I'll describe the room. The bare stone room consists of a foyer to the west and a shrine to the east. Four candlesticks lie on the dusty floor and the foyer are unlit. In the shrine, fragments of a shattered obsidian statue are scattered in a raised alcove in the eastern end of the chamber. Two pairs of empty alcoves lie on the north and south walls of the shrine. So there's like these alcoves over here, like that are like over mm -hmm. here. Um, are we like searching this or something? Can I light the candles to give us a bit more light? It's not as effective as like a torch or magic. No? Okay. Well, we got Marcus with his shiny sword, so I guess. You want Brilliant. Marcus to kind of move up there with you and light the room? I'm assuming like there's torchlight, if that's what you want. Yeah, yeah torchlight for me. And you Brilliant. can have a room to search. And you can see like the rubble of the shrine that was here. Um, make an investigation roll. Now, in the future, the investigation rolls will be rolled. Mm -hmm. Or actually, there's there'll be it'll be a hidden roll. Do I do it'll advantage? Be secret. Yes, you do. that 20 awesome like you assume like that golem maybe like knocked this thing over um just by like you see some tracks some like large imprints of, um in the gravel or whatever or this the amber stone that's been crunched out so somehow the the golem might have been patrolling around right and like just knocked it over yeah. and um Angry golem. you see like i don't know if it's here yeah it's here a secret entrance way. You find a secret door right here. With the help of Tog, you're able to spot it. I'm going to. I think what I have to do. So this is how it works. Let me go to edit high volumes. <laughs> um, I climb over. It? <laughs> I know. I just started floating up. I'm like, uh oh. So I just toggled the visibility on it. You guys see that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. But how I'd normally do it? Let me go into build mode. And then I actually will delete that wall like that. Oh, nice. So now you guys can pass through it. So you find like a hidden doorway that and you find some stairs that go downstairs. As as we go through, I'm going to search for traps and stuff like that. Make sure. Okay. So it. let's ha have you um, roll an investigation roll. Um, Brigian rolls it with you since he's helping you search for traps. When you're searching stuff like this, I'm saying it's like quarter speed. If you want to be real technical about it. 18. A dusty corridor heads north and bends to the east, descending down a dark, dark staircase. The air is thin, but the heavy it's heavy with the stench of death. So there's a foul smell coming from down the stairs. Um, no traps are found, um, but we got to go downstairs. Yep. I'm going to keep heading down slowly, make sure everyone's following behind. 
Okay. Um, I think I'm I have actually, to reveal more when I, things. So. When I smell that, I'm going to take a second to uh, healing surge and use the rest of my hit dice. That I've nice. Got. Anybody else want to do something before we I go down to maybe some danger? 1d12 plus 3d8. Shaq, you can use healing surge, I'm assuming, in your in your bear form. Um, I'm untouched. Okay. Shaq the immortal. I love it. I'm also this behind is, them, but I can't move my models. You guys, this is, is the I'll figure it out. Surge. So healing surge is a it's based off your hit dice, Irina. Your hit dice don't refresh till a long rest, right? Right. You have a certain amount of hit dice that you can use basically once per long rest, which is based off your level on uh, um, your class levels. You you should use right. you should use them. It's a renewable resource that you use, say, over, you would use first inside of your spell slots. You can also use it as an action in combat as well to kind of get yourself a second wind in combat. It's a way to heal yourself without Brydian being the healing bitch. That makes sense. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've revealed it. I'm just going to have to teleport you guys downstairs. Um, so the guy, the creator, it doesn't look like he built the stairway down here. But the stairway goes down, and I will teleport you guys down downstairs. Arena, if you click on the short rest button, it'll tell you how many of each die that you have. We have about a four-minute warning, so I'm going to describe then, what you see. I knew I had seen it. I knew I had seen it before. I just didn't. I was clicking yeah. on the one next to it. Viridian, are you using which ones you any use? hit, hit yeah. dice or anything like that, or are we just going? Yeah, on I've I've used I've used I just used I just figured I didn't want to saturate the thing, so I've I've used uh, uh, six of them. Marcus looks over at Viridian and is like, "Have you heard of Avris? <laughs> Their healing powers." <laughs> okay, so um, you see some amber reflections. The arched hall rises to the height of twenty feet. So you guys are going downstairs. You see your reflections in the amber glaze, but the images don't mirror your movements. Instead, they wave their arms and scream silent warnings to you. Do you just keep going downstairs, Tom? Oh, we didn't listen to him last time, so I'm not going to listen to him this time. You're like, look, the, the hallway isn't that big, so I'm going to put you guys kind of in a position... The stairs descend uh, to a collapsed hall with the high ceiling and amber glazed walls. Rubble covers most of the floor, and the path through the rubble leads to an open doorway. A deathly stench seems to come from there. Roll a stealth roll. Mm. We'll have um, Viridian roll stealth roll as well. Twenty-one for me. What did you get, Bridian? Six. One, so six. Bridian fails a stealth check. You hear like growling, and the smell gets louder, and you see these creatures crawling out, are on the ceiling, on the walls, on the ground, gas, on dead creatures of the night. Well, that's where we'll start our game next game. We go into combat. I'll put you guys kind of in the hallway. If you want me to, I'll do that now. If you really want me to get technical about it. No, you don't have to. Nah, you, you don't need to. Let me uh, kind of find out and move you. What do they look like? I'll uh, link it. I'm just going to try to move Toggle to kind of show you where you're at, Tog. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, I have to kind of. Where are they coming out at? This is kind of cool. You know, it's like this is a hidden, you know, area. Oh yeah, it's not. It's like totally hidden. But that, do you see yourself, Tog? Double click yourself, or is this whole area? Yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah. You, you see the rubble and everything like that. The doorway is mm. actually open, so that gets to something the guy messed up on. But I'm assuming you're like you're like back here. Let me see if I can get Viridian down here. Um, basically, I'll put you guys down here. Um, in I, this area. I see this is where Lice is showing. It's gonna be. I'm assuming. Tog always anyway. getting up to trouble, assuming. And he's probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the 50th guess you've made, Jamie, and you've been, like, wrong. I love it, though. You're, at least you're guessing. You're thinking. You guys having fun? Thought, 
Yeah, I actually generally thought we were going to be fighting a lich. That's why I was worried. So I was a bit happy when a ox tail come out the statue, not a lich. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. So, like, there's some more godstones and stuff in here. Let me see if I can move you guys down in here. You kind of move everybody. And Shaq, you're still in, like, your bear forms and stuff. Let me get your yeah, bears down here. Uh, hopefully we get everyone so that the fights are a little easier. <laughs> so D&D, &D, this is the way it's supposed to be played. Like, this is designed for four people. And especially you guys are at, like, level eight. You know? Um... You know, it's yeah, but you wouldn't have a chance against some of the creatures we've been fighting at level eight before. That's the thing about Curse of Strahd is it's pretty challenging. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, it can be really challenging. And that's why the first group I ran this with, when they're all like level three or whatever, you know, and being low level in D&D &D just kind of sucks because you don't have enough abilities and things. But, you know, let me see. I'm going to try to move Shaq and stuff in there. It's good that we stayed here because you get to do a bit of role play with Lice and her uh, Yeah, that'll be interesting for, for yeah. that to come up. Lice, if you guys remember way back in like session four or whatever, or whenever she, session three, when she joined the group, this was before Irene or Beridian came in. Um, her mission was to go to the Amber Temple. You guys remember that? And she's yep. like, you know, she's wanted to figure out a way to bring her father back. Mm hmm. Um, so, um, she wants to, and Brian, you've unlocked maybe a secret for that, right? Um, by touching this, the, uh, statue of Adon, hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, I've touched it. And there's obviously way more story around this. Um, for instance, uh, there was a guy in the camp who wanted to come to the Amber temple, who was a Vistani guy, or I'm sorry, he was a dusk elf. And he wanted to come to the camp too, but you guys just like teleported here from Ravenloft, right? So you guys never really went back to Velaki or whatever. So there's there's so many ways like this can whole thing can kind of play out. Um, yeah. So I got Toggle up there first. Let me move in. Uh, Bridian, where's Bridian at? You in there? I'm still, I'm still upstairs. I can, okay, yeah. Let me. Oh, there you are. Let me move you back out. I have to. The thing is, the guy didn't put the stairs in here, so I have to like manually toggle yeah, the guys in. Yeah, because I was just like, I don't even know where the hell that was. I'm just curious what these fins look like. Yeah, I'll link the picture right now. Give me a second. So I have you guys like this. Do you see that? I have Shaq up third, or the bear kit, the bear, which is Shaq. And then Shaq, here's your other bear, I guess. I have to put out another bear for you right now. It's nice just to get this all ready to go so we can start the next game, too. There you go, Shaq. You see that? God, I have so many pets. <laughs> do you like playing this Groot? Real life. Do you do you like playing this sort of style uh, character, Shaq, with the summons and the shape shifting? Oh yeah, it's my favorite. Well, that's awesome. Cool. As long as you're like, I want to be a giant, gigantic snake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll have to move it. So I'll put out the models of the gas. I'll reveal them. And they're like crawling on the walls and stuff. So I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with their movement. Because they can kind of like drop on you if they want to. But we'll roll initiative. And they're called gas? Yeah, they're called gas. They're more like... Britain, you know more about like undead and stuff. Let me bang them up. Um, so you kind of... Have, you know about Adon in the ethereal plane and undead a lot. So yeah. you, these things are not... What are, are known to you. Um... They are they're just known. they're just more like there's certain levels of intelligent creatures, and yeah, here let me link you a picture. They're no, they're nasty ass undead though. They're really cool. I like the pictures of them. There's one picture. Really, of them. yeah, they're really nasty. Oh wow! So that's one of them. Here's the another I picture. Always, of them. I always thought of these ones as like the Resident hey. Evil zombies rather than oh, yeah. just normal zombies. Yeah. There's another picture. So one way um, I might start doing Neither, it. Neither, that's good. <laughs> let me see. So I've labeled, I've labeled like gas with letters. So from my standpoint, what I can do is you can roll group initiative. But the problem is with you guys being so uber powerful, you guys roll group initiative. Say Dwarma goes ahead of me, he just fireballs him, right? So I might roll single initiative count. 
so they roll they can go some of them might go ahead of other players it'll be a little bit more confusing but it'll be okay it looks like Irina booked out that's okay she lost connection so that's yeah fun. did yep. you guys have fun yeah it was good, yeah. It was good. hopefully cool. we get everyone back so yeah it was a really unusual week you know lice i didn't hear anything about her getting sick so that was a little unusual um but that's why we have that's why we also have so many players because from week to week i mean meridian's been like talk you were absent that one week with a no show you know so it's like as a dm like i don't know like shack i think you've been here almost all the time but people just kind of you know come in and out so it's hard to know who's all going to be here so that way we have seven players which is a large table's worth we can still run the game with at least four players because yeah. if we, we get even three people missing like my brother, an emergency popped up, so he had to go help a friend. So, yeah, it's all good. It works. Yeah, and that's keeps something it, I just figured out as a DM. Moving. You know. Yeah. It keeps all moving, but the only thing is, it does make it harder for you to balance. Um. Yeah. I mean, like the legendary creatures get more legendary actions, 